Welcome to the Lincoln Cast for the week of December 1st, 2012. I am Thurbleton, and this is the Giant Bomb Community Podcast. I have a trip there. Uh, I'm joined by the co host Riven. What up? Hey, hey. New Brahma. That was the uh, worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, strap in, strap <laughs> well, on. Well, you haven't we heard karaoke the night then. And JKC. <laughs> What's up, dogs? Hey. Um, I guess we'll start off with what we've been playing. Uh, Ruben? Uh, mostly sports games like Madden and NBA 2K12, or 2K13, and uh, got my Vita and played Persona 4 Golden. Oh, yeah? Oh, you mean... Wait, you got a Vita? You got a yeah. Vita for Persona 4 Gordon. Golden. Why? What Gordon? am I saying? Golden. Well, Persona 4 Golden. To be more accurate, he's been watching Persona 4 Golden. Because I don't know. No, 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 no. You, I've, I've gotten to the start? point where it's a game. Yeah, I've done the Yukiko dungeon. Yuki, okay, right on. Um, so, yeah. are you enjoying your Vita? Was it was it worth yeah. the cost? Because I'm finally, well, I'm finally playing Persona Four, and I mean, I got it at a reasonable price. I got, I got it during the Amazon sale, so it was like. Wait, Persona Four or Vita? Which one did you I get? Got the Vita. At, I got oh. the Vita on sale. How much was it? Two hundred. Hmm. With taxes. With tax. Okay, that's pretty good. And it came with um, it came with Assassin's Creed Liberation, three months of PlayStation Plus, and PlayStation Battle All Stars, whatever that game's called. Hmm. So are you liking? Bucks. Yeah. I probably. Hmm. I, I want to go somewhere where I can probably have like a. A better Wi-Fi connection around my campus, so I can at least use that stuff when I'm while getting classes playing my Vita. <laughs> but other than that, it's been great. Are you planning on buying more games for it, or are you just going to stop with your? Uh, I bought Persona Ragnarok 4. Odyssey because I heard that was a kind of Wait, monster is that like Ragnarok game. Online except it's a single yes. player game? Oh god! Yes. Why would you? Why? Because it's kind of, it's it's a it's like a Monster Hunter ish game. I love Monster. Speaking of, there's no Monster Hunter game for Vita, is there? Well, not yet. That's why I, that's I, why like, I bought That'd be super Ragnarok. successful. That'd be extremely successful. I don't know why they don't have that yet. Because I remember loving Monster Hunter for the PSP until I broke my PSP. And then I just threw the disc out in sadness. Yeah. I think Wait, my... P- P- my v- the cartridge? UMD discs. Oh, right, right. No, right. UMDs might as well have been cartridges. <laughs> it, was a, it was a disc inside of a cartridge. A disc inside of... Yeah, wait, so is everything, like, online on the PSP? Like, no, no, or PSP, I mean, the PS Vita. Vita, that's the new one. Vita. Yeah, the Vita, the Vita. Yeah, what is, so it's is just like you download everything? No, there are some super small-ass cartridges. Cartridges? Or not cartridges, basically like memory sticks. Yeah, I've heard okay. it. It's like, it's SD, it's SD uh, cards, right? Yeah. Which? So, my, yeah, my version of uh, Assassin's Creed Liberation did not come with a case. I will fucking lose that game. Oh, wow. Is it, like, micro SD or SD card size? I, I think it's just it's, SD. Micro SD would okay. be insane. Yeah, it would probably be insane. Let's, let's, hold on. Let me... Grab one of my games in size <laughs> comparison. All right. I, I'm going to visually describe what Revan's doing right now. He is um reaching down. That does not look... Oh, God. Oh, oh God. it's about the size of a quarter. Yeah, it is cu- quite small. Shut up, noob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the PS Vita memory stick or whatever. You, you always know what you are. No, the memory about. stick is about the size of a fucking, like the size of a penny. So the games are about as big as a quarter. So is it? Is there a hard drive built in, or is it another SD card kind of thing? Another SD card. Okay. How much? How big was the SD card that came with it? Four gigs. Four gigs? Is that no? That, is that enough to hold one of the one game off of PlayStation yeah. Play or something like that? I don't think so. Hmm. So you definitely want a bigger 
drive when you're using PlayStation Play, I guess. Yeah. It's like th- the whole idea is getting free games, and then, yeah, that probably works well for now, Sony. I, something I've always heard that's like some people love, some people hate. Have you run into any issues? Are you are you loving the like the touch sensors on the uh, the bottom of the Vita? I have never used them. I don't think Persona uses them. Oh wow, what a waste! Yeah, I mean, judging from the Bombcast and from what I, other people have, like my friends have bought videos, like generally, like you're not going to use them. Like the few games I do use, the bottom touch pads aren't very good to begin with. So it seems like a gimmicky mm-hmm. thing, like try to add on to make it more appealing. Yeah, is it is it appealing? I don't know. I'm I'm reserving my judgment on any console games or it, consoles it, in general until the new generation comes out. So then you can make fun of the old generation. Yeah, in my day. Um, yeah, I think I think it's a, a good idea. It's just the application of it. It's just in a bad position. And there there might not be any right way to uh, or right place to put like those the sensors on the the backside. But, I'm I'm trying to think of like in what case you would use them and like an effective. And like useful use for them. I mean, if you are, I mean, in games where you're already using the bumper and you need like a quick turnaround thing, you could just mm. tap those and quick right. turn around. But, but that's like press this that's to a special turn situation. Yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. Because like know. the way you hold the Vita is like you press your fingers on the back touchpad. It's not really natural yeah. like, grip on the Vita. No. So like it is, game, I, I don't think like putting any controls on the back unless like the game was specifically designed around it would really work very well. It does seem very gimmicky. I don't know. That's just my judgment. All I need is a mouse and keyboard. That's all. Well, like I actually personally like like the Vita. I mean, I I had the PSP as well. It just like a lack of software killed it. And honestly, it's gonna be the same thing for the Vita. No matter how good the hardware is, yeah. like if there's no game, like good games, I want to play for it. Right. It's not gonna really succeed. Mm-hmm. I guess so. Probably. Which was that all you catch twenty twos. Well, no, like, if, if no one's going to get the Vita because there's no good games for it, but no one wants to you know, make good games for it because no one's buying a Vita. Yeah, and the issue is Sony has had, like, the really bad, um, like, bad history of the PSP. So, like, all the developers are kind of like, uh, we, we could develop for the Vita, but judging from the history of the PSP, it's safer hedge bets to make games for other consoles, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, there's only really two big mobile gaming, not mobile, but like handheld gaming platforms. It's either the Nintendo DS and all of its things, or the PSP. Well, I just no. personally prefer... I always thought like the PSP was associated with like graphic fidelity and a little bit more console yeah, you, game experience. You are forgetting one thing. It's called the iPhone, which what like like a yeah. lot of developers yeah. have been gravitating towards is A, you don't need to make complex, like, complex 3D games on the iPhone, but Right. Like you can just make a simple games, so it costs a lower, and like you can stand to make more profit simply because the install base is that much bigger. So like it's like yeah, just getting out that gate is going to be tougher with the iPhone. Yeah. Right. So like people like like mobile gaming in general is, is like moving away from like the console consoles on the handheld to more like out. quick games like Ang- Angry Birds or um, Angry Birds Star Wars, whatever the heck they're coming out with next. Oh God! What? Oh, yeah. they should yeah. never sold it to Disney. <laughs> Wait, no. Was it Angry Birds Star Wars? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Angry Birds Star Wars. They made an Angry Birds Star Wars, I feel like they did. No, that, that's Angry Birds Space, or whatever it's called. No, they might have actually... Well, I mean, there's always what? Google. Come on, guys. Well, I mean, like, when you guys... When you had a PSP, or um, when you're using the Vita, Revan, do you ever use it when you're, like, on the bus? Because whenever I had my PSP, I'd always just use it as, like, something I'd play on my bed. I wouldn't really use it outside of my house. I don't... I don't take the bus anywhere. Or just, like, I'm... outside. Well, you, you said you use it your, I, while you're on the yeah, way to the classes and whatnot, yeah, you right? Just, yeah, I walked to all my classes. It's not that far. Right. I'll use it when I... I'll use it while I'm walking there, and I'll... If, I'm, if I get there early, I'll usually just sit down and play that. Right. Just to confirm, there is Angry Birds Star Wars. What? what? Yeah. What would are, you do? Like, is this just like Darth Vader birds, birds or something? Or like, no, yeah. like Darth Vader like, birds. Like, the bad guys are the pigs. So you have like Tie Fighters with a pig face on them, and I thought yeah. I honestly thought they would just put a stormtrooper helmet on it and call it a day. Yeah, I thought I was. It's like Darth 
Darth Vader mask, Stormtrooper. Well, I'm helmet. looking at That's the official it. Google Play site, and they they have a Hoth level, they have a Attack of Death Star level. So <laughs> of course, there's a Hoth level. Yeah, it's Star Wars. Of course, come on now. And like, obviously, like they like a giant like um, what was it AT AT or ATST? I forgot. What ATATs what are the big ones. Yeah, ATSTs the are big the ones. Two ATATs ones. like it's made out of like blocks and the head is shaped like a pig. So right, you can yeah. No, well. it's like, uh, that's like that's you. perfect rendition of Star Wars in, was it, in Angry was Bird it, form. Wait, what, who makes Angry Birds again? I forget. Rovio? Was, is it Rovio that laid a shitload of people out? Or is that just Zynga? That's that Zynga. Was, might be both. I, I don't know Zynga specifically Rovio, but I do know Zynga laid off a bunch of people. Yeah. Oh well. I I don't know. Didn't... Oh god. You guys know Big Huge Games? Like the mm. the developer? Uh, what about them? Wait. No. What about them? You you don't know? You don't know Big Huge? They made Rise of Nations? Well, do you know Brian Reynolds? Nope. They, he nope. made, like, Civilization Two, Alpha Centauri, whatever. He designed all of those games, and then he was in, like, Firaxis and Big Huge, and then now he works at Zynga, which is kind of sad. I wonder if he's been laid off. Well, I mean, Zynga, like, spends a lot of money, get a lot of talent, but judging from, like, what people are saying about Zynga, or what like insiders supposedly are saying about Zynga, is like there's no direction within Zynga. They have a bunch of talent and a bunch yeah. of money, but like nobody to tell them what to do. You know? Yeah. So it's not much of a video game company. As no. Much as it, like I don't know. So it's like small phone game. So Riven, you have you been playing anything else recently? No, that's really about it. Just well. Hey, that's my line, Riven. Have you been playing anything else recently? <laughs> I'm the no, host. No, that's really about it. <laughs> well, no, he has been. Well, like we'll get to it later on, I guess. But Redman has been spending way too much time in Fractals recently. That's no. I he's been spending the not. average amount of Riven time in Fractals. Uh, no, like I log on and I'm just like Riven's in the Fractal. Riven's in the Fractal. Yeah, Riven time. You, that's Riven time, man. It's always Riven time. <laughs> I got that rifle skin. It's been worth it so far. Yeah, for level cool six warrior. warrior. You're a guardian. You don't use rifles. No, it's for it's, the it's for the warrior. This level six warrior clearly needs a fancy skin. Come on. Yeah, you, you yeah. Do, you do need a high tier fractal. Yeah. But we'll get to that later. Anything else? Uh, rocking on the PS Vita or anything new? Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Um, new Brahma. I, I cringe at asking this, but uh, what's up? Wow. Fuck you too, Thurb. <laughs> well, I've been saying fuck you to Thurb because he's a jerk for no reason. What that was uncalled for. Um, you just well, don't seem to like my country's holidays. What do you mean? What, what Last holidays? week, you did Thanksgiving and all that. That's fake giving. That's what it was. You don't give thanks. That's that not hurts. real Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. That's because you hurt me. That's what happens. <laughs> um, now you made me forget my train of thought. I was like preparing for this all day. I know. I'm trying to throw you off. Fuck. Okay, so I I've been playing something new this week. Victoria Two. Oh wait, that's not new. Um, that sounds like an old game. That it, fuck you, it's not an old game. Okay, so basically, I, my humble country of Belgium has become the fifth most powerful country in the world. Um, and yeah, I I beat France and England in wars and death death by chocolate, death by chocolate and oh, waffles, very nice. waffle chocolate waffles. In fact, um, what what other game have I been playing? I know I've been playing one other game. Let me just check my Steam community list. It's gonna be on here. Exciting podcasting, playing. guys. Fallout New Vegas. Yeah. Fallout New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas. Yeah. Oh I've God. Played. Without cheating. Without cheating. That's, that's oh an accomplishment God. For me. What? What do you mean? Oh God. Fallout that's New actually Vegas for great. for you. I am impressed because it, it's it, like from what I've heard. Usually, when you get into New Vegas or Skyrim or any of those, yep. within Bethesda minutes games. you find a way to access the the dev console without even yeah. knowing you're doing it. Yeah. Um. I. Okay. I, that's kind of a lie. I, I did cheat a couple of times, but I'm going to let those pass as not cheating because they were for good reason. Like, I really wanted to get what was in the chest, but I didn't have enough high lock picking, so I had to cheat. But but that's completely okay. That's what the developers want you to do, right, guys? Um, and so, yeah. yeah. They, wouldn't put that, they wouldn't put that in there if they didn't want Yeah, to. exactly. If they gave me, like... The console, they clearly. I cheated my way through my it. PC version of Skyrim, but that was because I'd already played the console version of Skyrim. Yeah, well, and console also version like... as in like using the console, because I I've only played the console version. If that's what you mean, as in my Xbox 360 version of Skyrim. Oh, okay. I I don't want to do anything 
about Xbox 360 because. Wait, how how is Skyrim on the Xbox 360? Like it's the fine. very vanilla experience. I don't think I've was... played a vanilla Skyrim game yet. It was fine. Really? I heard. Yeah. Oh wait. Oh no, that's that was the PS3, PS3 that was, that was yeah function. Uh, oh god, piece of shit. That looked awful. Yeah, the PS3 yes. version. Just looking at the, um, yeah, the, the longer, the bigger the save was, the more like your game performance. It just lagged the whole game down, didn't it? Yeah. Was. yeah, and eventually yeah. it would get to a point where it just wouldn't load. No, that's that's really bad. But I don't know. Yeah, I put, really I, I clocked in a, a, a fair number of hours in Skyrim, but I just I it's I didn't have the tenacity to finish it, mm-hmm. and I would always just like end up having to. It's like oh I. I Invested so much time to realize I don't really like playing as a like stab dude and then re-roll as a uh, caster or something. What about arrow dude? Arrow dude is good too. Like the the half stealth arrow dude or yeah, who likes or to like lock straight there? up battle arrow dude. Oh, I never tried battle arrow dude. Battle arrow dude is the best arrow dude. Um, no, because he can like arrow dude while being in battle. That sounds like the name of an elf in some MMO. Battle. It's like the no. name of a bad <laughs> iPhone game. So you could you could play as a sexy battle arrow lady. I always play I always as, play as a, a lizard big, dude. hunky battle dude. Wizard oh, lizard the lizard yeah. man. The retard lizard people. Yes. Just, just because they're right. so silly. Hey, don't forget about the orcs. Silly. Don't they're discriminate disgusting. against the orcs. I, I got no I had respect for the orcs. I was just like oh. I could be a lizard dude. I also am. A terrible, Lady. like, genocidal racist in those games where I sometimes I just pick on races and just kill them regardless. So the cat ladies outside of Winterholm, you just constantly, like, oh, steal their stuff? Those people don't exist anymore. Oh, you I don't them? steal their okay. stuff. I just kill their bodies and then find their keepers. You kill their bodies. Right. Kill their bodies. <laughs> kill them. Kills them. <laughs> kill yeah. their bodies. They don't die, man. Those cat people, they don't have any souls. Now, are you playing... Like, they have not... No, I'm not. What, what brought you back into Skyrim? Was it wasn't was one of the... Uh... Expansions that hit, or like one of the DLCs, or were you just playing straight vanilla, no cheating Sky- Skyrim? Skyrim? I wasn't playing Skyrim. I was playing Fallout New Vegas. Pl- yeah, or New Vegas. Vegas. That's what well, was it. One of those. Well, I, last track. week, um, I bought all of the DLCs, so that was like one of the reasons I would I booted up New Vegas. Other than that, uh-huh. it's just like I kind of wanted something with a lot of decapitation and a lot of blood and the ability to kill anyone I really wanted to. I don't know why. It just I have those urges. I think that's a bad thing. I'm I'm glad we have video games to I know, solve right? those urges. <sighs> Sometimes we have I, this I'm on record, so then, should we ever need to explain to someone what yeah, happened? We, we do have incriminating evidence. Show this. Uh, no, no, you don't. Don't be silly. Well, most sound recordings are inadmissible in court. I hear podcasts; they do make an exception for that. No, podcasts so. are not reliable sources of court information. No, they're not reliable in sources of any information. Canada? Are you kidding me? No. Well, no Canada. Who gets their information from podcasts? Really? Everything Canada. we've been saying here has been 100% factual. Yep, 100% factual. Mm-hmm. That's why it's called the Lincoln cast, because in Latin, Lincoln means true stuff. Uh, Moving yeah, on. Okay, stuff. go ahead. Ask someone else. <laughs> <laughs> right, right on. Um, JKC, what's up? Uh, nothing new, new much. New to the, the podcast. Yes, I am. Welcome. I, I am welcomed. Guys, this so, is so what have you me. been up to? From now until uh, for, since your birth, uh, I have been or just uh, cur- this week cursing my life, get, being stuck in traffic because Los Angeles traffic is. He's been farming the best. since about two days be- after he was born. Yes, and um, when I first born, first thing I learned was to turn on the PC, load up Guild Wars two, and just farm planks until it got nerfed. So yeah, actually no, uh, I have been. Uh, I did finish up um, Sleeping Dogs. Sleepy dogs. Oh, sleepy dogs. Sleepy oh, dogs. Cool. So that, that was. So a, how was it? As a fan of um, was the ending Hong worth Kong, it? Um, movies, like it's a pretty decent homage in video game form. So I, I'm still it's kind very of John Woo like. Was it called uh, True Crime Hong Kong? But hey, it's not much you can do oh. about that. Is it? Yeah. Is it better than Stranglehold? Oh, dude, Stranglehold, man! Come on, crotch shots every <laughs> single time. You have to admit it was are sliding there across doves? the room, <laughs> yeah. or like no momentum, and then you jump on tables and then roll around. Yep, sounds like a Str- all I can think of movie. Hong Kong movies. So, yeah, John Wu movie. Yeah, it's a lot boiled. better than Stranglehold. Yeah, for sure. Like in terms of actual like playing a game, not just being abused by stupid shit. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, without without spoiling too much, I I, ended up, I did play a lot of Sleeping Dogs. I really enjoyed it. I I liked the whole driving around aspects. But there was one part in the I guess storyline that I mean like I guess it's something that would happen in every mafia movie when people try to be happy. Yeah, well, yeah, fairly really like, early in this in the again, game. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, but this is a homage to Hong Kong crime thrillers and Hong Kong crime thrillers in a way, were derived from their Western counterparts, so I would say you wouldn't be too far off. Okay, but I was just like, really, we're doing this scene? And it's like, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but, it's, it's, right, it's, might, not, it's not anything it original. It's, holiday. it's kind of like Rockstar and their, um, like how they model their, some of their games after certain certain movies, whatnot. Very cool. So you, you enjoyed it, though? You had a good time? Yeah, um, I wouldn't, I'm not going to be buying the, um, uh, the zombie pack, what what came out for Halloween. Um, I had enough sleeping dogs. Like after a while, you just like, you know what? Like all this is fun, but I've done every all combat stuff. You know, combat is fine, but it's not exactly brilliant. You know, like you just want to end the story and then move on after a certain point. Like yeah. story is still pretty good. It's just that you just run out of stuff to do in the world. That's fun because all the side missions I, I are think not very fun. Basing it off of the whole GTA concept, those are always these massive worlds. And the Hong Kong they made is kind of small comparatively. Yeah, like especially if you look at pictures of Hong Kong actually being to Asia, like I'm sure Noob can attest. Like Asia is, the cities are been to crowded. Hong Kong. Like they are crowded. Yeah, they are very crowded. And ha- Sleepy Dogs um, is not very crowded. Well, and then the whole aspect of uh, melee fighting first, shooting is sort of a secondary element that's thrown in. Um, it's it. I mean. Yeah, you can climb around and you fight stuff, but after a while, that does get kind of boring. The the whole like aspect of we have fifteen different guns you can make a stand with two in the GTAs adds to like an extended bit of fun in that game that like gives it a few more hours of enjoyment, I guess. Yeah, like the what, the carrot on the stick with the uh, combat systems in uh, Sleepy Dogs or Sleeping Dogs rather um, is that they <laughs> Sleepy Dogs. <laughs> They, Sleepy like, dogs. stretch out the, um, the unlocks, the melee unlocks. So you could get some pretty devastating moves, like, besides, like, the knee crunch into, like, knee slam into the face kind of thing. But the problem is, like, you don't have any incentive to use those later moves, you know, like, besides, like, use them once. Because their basic moves are really, really effective at killing dudes really fast. Yeah, apart from, like, the basic AI that is, like, I'm going to come up and grab you every time you try and block, it's, there, there's really not any reason to just not do the button smashing. Yeah, unfortunately, like, one of the, like, the one thing, the reasons why I got kind of sick with the combat in the game is because there's just not that many bad dudes. Like, eventually you'll start fighting guys who you can't grapple, or, like, you can only damage by countering them, and that just gets boring after a while, because you don't, you can't use any of your cool moves and you just unlock, because you're just sitting there waiting to counter their attacks, because that's the safest way to kill them. So, like, it, it definitely feels like like if you guys know the development of the game, it was like originally cancelled and then picked up by Square Enix. So it does definitely feel yeah. like there's a lot of shortcomings there. Um, the combat is as well rounded as it should be, and the world is a lot smaller than it should be. And there's not just not a lot, whole lot to do in the world. Like once you realize, like you've done a few basic like side missions, all the rest of the side missions are very similar, which is unfortunate because it's a lot of fun driving around the world and killing killing guys, running over people. Stuffing bodies into trunks and pushing them off into the river, kind of deal. Those, those first few hours of gameplay, it's kind of jarring, always running into cars when you're driving on the right side of the road. <laughs> yeah, eventually, you're just like, fuck it. I'm just like, I am the law. I just do whatever you want to do. <laughs> I am the law. Um, but it, it's, do you, do you, like, I assume you've played previous true crime games? I have not, no, actually. I played GTA, and this is like my first true crime, quote unquote, game that I've played. I was going to say, like, are, are you glad they uh, Square Enix picked it up, or would you prefer just, like, to stick with no. the GTAs, Dead Road Redemption? Well, I, I'm glad they picked it up in the sense that I got to experience this game, I, again, as a fan of Hong Kong film. It's, like, re- like so, like, seeing, like, the story, what the story plays out and all the characters, it's, like, it kind of makes me happy inside. But if you yeah. were to ask me which game, like, what game I would prefer, like, say, Sleeping Dogs or uh, GTA 4. I would say GTA 4 is a more comprehensive, well-rounded game, like in terms of multiplayer and all that stuff too as well. It's just just like Sleeping Dogs has a 
the a superior melee combat, and that's about it. Possibly better graphics, but again, we're comparing games that did not come out at the same time. Yeah, it'd be nice if like they like picked up a game that had the like because the the whole I guess destructible environment that you use to beat up people you're fighting. The melee combat's great, but it's just like I think if they had a, more guns where you just you just didn't have as much ammo, would uh, uh, like cause for a bit more ex- like you know. Well, I mean the problem is like once options. you use guns and sleeping dogs, like police immediately come. Like no, it can be like like having a fist fight with like eighteen dudes in the corner of Hong Kong, like in Hong Kong and sleeping dogs. But the moment you pull out a gun and shoot it, like the entire like Hong Kong police force is suddenly right there shooting at you. Yeah, man, guns are guns are bad. Gun yeah, violence. Yeah, guns are bad. bad. I heard that too. Yeah, that's why in America everybody can own guns. Uh, yeah. uh, sorry, political point. Don't worry about it. I fully <laughs> support gun ownership in America. By the way, going to America, we have lots of bullets. Yeah, other than that, though, I've been mostly been playing uh, <laughs> Guild Wars. Um, I I'm t- a kind of person who tends to like focus in on one game and yeah, play that. Um. Well, yeah, uh, what have you been doing, Thurb? What have I been doing? I have been doing lots of stuff, not all of which has been playing games, but that's mostly because last week was friggin' Black Friday, and I worked mm-hmm. retail. Oh. Yep. By the way, damn you all who went shopping on Black Friday. A curse upon yep. your family. But Apologize to... Th- take this moment to apologize to Thurb. No, just... Is going to, a- is going to Amazon counter shopping? No. No, not really. That's the online stuff's fine. It's just it. What? Why does it take you people so long to shop? Just eating more and more of the calendar up. Okay, I'll get off the soapbox. Now, I have been playing it on, on the same line of just open world. I I did play a bit of Assassin's Creed. I got through the three hour like tutorial, and I'm about like two hours after that. I've done a bit of the boat uh, shooting and all that. I had a ton of fun with that. Uh, but it's just I'm I'm having trouble. Continually playing the game, I, I, it's, games don't catch me as as well as they used to. I guess I don't know. Hmm. That's one of my problems. One thing that Maybe really pissed me ADD. off. No, I'm just lazy. Oh. Uh, one thing that really pissed me off was in the older in, in Assassin's Creed One and Two, and I assume for the expansions as well for like the add-ons for two. Whenever you got in a fist fight, the guards didn't take beef until you drew a sword. Right. I'm not sure if any of you guys played the old games, but like that's. Until you start stabbing dudes, that's when the guards are like, hey, bro, you gotta stop. When you were just punching them, everything was still good. Was it? I, yeah. I guess it depended on who you were punching? That's true. If you punched a guard, he would just start stabbing you. Yeah. But if you punch people like in the street, they they didn't bother you. Yeah, Ribbon has in plenty of experience in Creed, pu- punching people. You should ask him how that works in real life. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I know he punched a no. refrigerator with a mouse. No guards have bothered me when I've punched things. Okay. Very nice. But in Assassin's Creed 3, they will straight up shoot you and stab you if you punch people. And that pisses me off. And you can't even grab like guys and throw them against stuff. At least I haven't been able to. I might just be missing buttons. But, I don't know. I, I, have either of you guys picked up Assassin's Creed 3 or, or wanting to? I have it. I just haven't had the urge to play it. I mean, I'd say I, I'd I'd say wait until um, Chris, uh, Christmas and maybe Steam that's, or Ubisoft. Oh, well, that's what I, that's what I was gonna have to do because I was just gonna be playing this and then studying for finals. Yeah, it's school. School is cool, folks. Stay in school. Optimus Prime says so. Um, but no, I've, I've been pl- I've been watching on the um, Amnesia Fortnite Humble bu- uh, Indie Bundle. Which can you still get in on that? Hmm. Are, are they letting probably, people join in? It's probably in? not going to be out by the time this thing comes up, to be well, fair. No, are, are they letting people join in the whole time while it's, uh, um, like, the two weeks of development? All I know for now is the... Oh, the, it, that voting's over, if I was not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, the voting's... Is it over? Okay. I believe it is over. Well, the voting's over, is but that... are, are they still doing, um... Like, you can still donate to get in on the prototype. I think so. For, for folks who don't know or who aren't listening, first off, there's a website called HumbleBundle.com, and they do all sorts of just, like, you play old video games or new stuff, um, and you donate to the developers, to the, uh, the Humble Bundle site, and to Child's Play Charity. Yeah. Well, usually Child's Play. Do they change it at all? Um, it's generally Child's Play. 
basically it's like there's a pack of five games you can buy that that you can pay whatever you want, like minimum one cent to whatever amount, and you can decide where that money goes. Either like split it between like Serb said the three different organizations, so Child's Play, um, the developer, or their charity. It's usually indie games. That's why it's called like the Indie Humble Bundle. But recently, there's been a lot more mainstream games. Like they've done, they, they actually on. did a, an Android bundle as well. Yes, and, they did. Uh, um, right, like right you now, just now did one. They're doing THQ bundle right now as well. So a bunch of THQ games are on sale for any amount you want to pay. If I recall correctly, it's Red Faction, all of the Company of Heroes games. And if you pay more than like $7, you get, um, what do you call it? Saints, Saints Row. Well, yeah, ha- how, how it always works is uh, for whatever platform you're, is, you're using, they'll usually say like if you donate over the average, you'll get uh, access to this you know extra special game. Right. Um, also, it, these games are also activational on Steam, so it's mm-hmm. not even just downloading there. You can literally get them any way you want. Yeah, you can do a straight download or just get the Steam keys. I I feel kind of bad for THQ. I THQ, fuck. They yeah. need the money. They, They're they, in trouble. They're, They're doing they're... everything they can for money to try and get Company Heroes done and Saints Row the fourth they're, done. They're right, so it's currently... Somebody. Saints Row 3rd is 567 to unlock, and the games include Darksider, Metro 2033, Red Faction, Armageddon, Company of Heroes, Company of Heroes Opposing Fronts, Company of Heroes Tales of Valor, and I strongly recommend that if you don't have any of these games, you should just get them. Like, yeah, even if you only want one of them, because you get extra copies that you can give out to your friends. But by the time this podcast is coming out, you have roughly a week to drop less than six bucks. This is, this is a time recording. It might go up to actually six bucks to get six games seven games i'm counting most of seven them are pretty good most of them are pretty good saints row the third is awesome uh, especially if you like open world shenanigans i mean saints row the third pretty much is a great satire of gta if you liked san andreas and vice city and all that craziness and, and liked them mm. for the absurdity of it while still running around like shooting guys Saint Row the Third, Saint Saint Third, and right I, up your alley. And I can also vouch for the Company of Heroes games. Um, I have them as Fuck well. Yeah, Company of Heroes. Company of Heroes is such an I, I awesome RTS. I have hundreds of hours in them. Mm-hmm. Like, how would you describe I, Company of Heroes in terms of a strategy game? Like compare, like comparative what, mm-hmm. or just what's the basis of it? It is very. It's not the typical kind of strategy game where you just send in troops. Like, it's more based on. So it's a tactical strategy game, like a tactical um, RTS where placement of troops are important. It's a lot of micromanagement. Um, it's not something like StarCraft, where it's based on speed, micro, macro. It is real-time. Like, it is real-time, yeah. but at the yeah. same time, it's more strategy-based. Yeah, you control... It's, it's like, less reflexes. Yeah, you control, like, a few units. Like, normally, like, most you, most number of units you control will be, like, maybe 10 or so. And there are resources to gather, but you capture those points, and you get resources over time. So the way the combat works is that you have to... Um, make sh- tactical decisions, defending points, and then strategic decisions by figuring out which points you want to get, and then from there, right. you manage your base and figure out which tech you want, want to um, research and all that stuff. It's a really, like, it sounds complex, but when you actually start playing it, it's super fun because it's, like, really, it's like... very addicting. Yeah, really, like, not really micro-intensive, but p- positional-intensive. So you don't need a whole now, lot like, of... Like, if you get this it. game and you need people to play with, the Giant Bomb PC Gaming Hub plays Company of Heroes a lot, so... Oh, yeah. Sure, with this humble bundle, a lot of people are going to be playing Company of Heroes. So hop on, purchase the game. Very fun. And, you know, if you like it, then you're going to be pretty much excited for Company of Heroes 2. Again, six which bucks. Which hopefully comes out. That's, six bucks. That's less than a dollar for a game. What is what is Red Faction Armageddon? Is that like an add on for Red Faction 3? or? Um, I think it's a standalone Red Faction game. But, it, like, the same physics wrecking stuff? Was that, yep. the, f- was that the first um, current generation Red Faction game? I believe no, isn't wasn't there one before Red Faction Armageddon? Not Red no. Faction Gorilla, but between Red Faction Armageddon. And oh, I was thinking. Oh no, I was thinking of Gorilla. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I don't know what Metro Twenty Thirty Three is. Metro Twenty Thirty Three is a fucking awesome game. So I, I guess I'll do I'm like a short synopsis it. of it. It's like a survival horror kind of first person shooter. If you played Stalker, it's similar, except it's a little bit more closed worldish, as in it takes place in the underground. Russians Moscow subway um, after a nuclear war, um, and it's quite good. It is very the 
visually it's stunning and the gameplay is very fun. I'd highly recommend it. Okay. Also, well, so I mean, like, like it's, it's there's per- no reason not to get this pack. Of, of the there's bundle, no Metro 33 is the only one I, I haven't like played in some console or some variation. Right. And it, it, like, would you say it's worth the six bucks? Is it? It a, is a good so game much. If you're out? getting all of these, I would personally pay twenty dollars. Well, I bought this full price, but like, I would. It's so worth it for all of these games plus Metro Twenty Thirty Three plus Company of Heroes. You have nothing to lose by paying lots of money for this. Oh, and add on for anybody who is just like, well, I'm going to pass on this, but. Um, for for all the uh, bundles, they usually end up throwing the soundtracks as well, and that's the case yep. for this one. There's five yes. soundtracks. Five soundtracks. Um, so, but yeah, backtrack. And a I think if you get when you get Saints Row the Third, you get that soundtrack as well. And that game, oh is yeah, a pretty good soundtrack. That's actually yeah. They they pulled a lot of like high high labels and actually like uh, singers for uh, Saints Row the Third. Didn't they? They got. That one rapper who I can't remember because I live under a rock. What the power song? Kanye West. Into the power, yeah, Kanye. Oh, yeah. you mean the best mission in the game? <laughs> and don't yeah. forget about Tara Patrick. Let's not forget about her. Mm-hmm. Also, Tara Patrick one, was in that game. One one sad thing about a couple hours ago, the person who contributed the most amount of money to this bundle was the T, um the CEO of THQ. Um, oh. One thousand six hundred and fifty dollars, and apparently someone named McJohn topped that by one cent to be the top contributor. Oh, I know that's because uh. people are giving money to THQ. Yeah, I mean they made some poor, poor, uh, unfortunate rather uh, decisions in the past, and it's come back to hurt them. But they, yeah, like all these games in this package are really good. Yep. Yes, I, I'd highly recommend getting. And, and then the last one is uh, for anybody who liked to play like Zelda and loved Ocarina of Time. It's Dark Siders, and if you've listened to the Giant Bomb Cast, really any anybody, it's Dark Siders is Zelda for grownups. So we're we're just basically cashing in our checks from THQ. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. Six dollars. Six dollars. <laughs> no, it's yeah. not money. They're they're giving us this humble bundle. Is what they're doing. I'm just they I'm throwing it all to charity. They, they can't even afford to give us the, that Humble <laughs> No, they bundle. can't. They cannot. That's sad. That's no, but uh, speaking on Humble Bundles is um, Double Fine ended up doing one for their Amnesia Fortnite. Uh, and I, I, I played a little bit of Brazen, the, the prototype of it that uh, Brad Muir did the quick look on. And it, I had a lot of fun with it. It was sort of campy, but it, and it broke on me halfway through. But it was fun. Did any of you guys watch that quick look or uh, pick up? The bundle for Double Fine? Uh, no. no, I did not. I'm not a Double Fine. I've been many, I've, I'm behind on quick looks and podcasts. You are too. Well, it's because you're doing so many fractals. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying. And I'm also watching the Persona 4 Endurance run while I'm playing before, uh, Persona 4. This isn't a podcast. This is an intervention. You need to stop. Yeah, you need to stop. <laughs> I can stop whenever I want. So like <laughs> it was like what two two nights ago. Like Ravens was like, oh man, how did the paper do? Oh here, hold on, let me do another fractal. <laughs> I finished that fucking paper. I'm glad you did too. Oh, yeah, o- only to realize you were a couple thousand. Pa- uh, because the teacher long. did not explicitly explain that paper had to be six thousand words. How many words was yours? Maybe two thousand five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. To be fair, no one was anywhere near 6,000 words. Well, they need to get get in gear and start making words. Yep. Make words, bro. Make words, not what? love. Oh, wait, wait. That's, that's make l- love, not words, but make words. I don't know. Always be making wow. words. So that's is that all lot. you did, Thurb? Thurb? Um, that and just... General Guild Wars and, and working all that. I, I have started playing uh, Cards Against Humanity uh, with Aww, with friends at, at work. Oh, that's good. That's good. And just uh, the, my favorite part is just seeing people at lunch look over their shoulder like, "What are they playing?" Which, by the way, have you guys checked the website? The uh, website? No. Cards Against Humanity. Aren't they doing a, Chris- Aren't they doing a Christmas I one? The I think they're doing a Christmas one, but there's a countdown. Uh, that's probably going to be like hitting zero by the time this podcast comes out. No, it's, so, it's one day. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. If not, then you guys have already missed it, and sorry. Check out the quick look for Cards Against Humanity. It's an awesome game for horrible people. 
Uh, like playing a lot of Cards Against Humanity, I found that it gets a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I'm playing it too much. I mean, anything too much of anything is a bad thing, and it gets stale. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's why you have that's, like blank uh, cards or buy the expansions. But yeah, yeah, like I agree. Like, I have every, eventually I just have every expansion. It's a little... Yeah, but yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. Um, I guess we'll start off with what's been new with Guild Wars. Fuck that game, so boring. Yeah, who plays yeah. Guild Wars, right, noob? Fuck no, I don't. I, what's Guild Wars? Uh, I don't know. You yeah. haven't been online. Oh, is that like the stupid WoW knockoff? No, it's the um, what it's the terror knockoff. The one with the. Oh, uh, I thought it was the plant side and, too. And, and apparently, they don't even have real little girls. Game. So who cares? What? I don't know. Yeah. Those humans are kind of creepy looking. I. They look like children. They are children. I know. That's can't stand point. it. Why? Why can't you stand it? That's the whole appeal of Terra. <laughs> why do yeah. you think Terra has a player base? It's yeah, they're all pedophiles. Because they're all like <laughs> all the people in Terra, they all they're play all pedophile. little pedophile, like, pedophile. like play a small like childlike girls, and then I could guarantee you, like the people who play Terra and the people on like the sex offenders registry, if you made, like, a Venn diagram, they'd literally be on top of each other, those circles. Okay, that's not... They that's probably not, would. That's not flame too hard now. <laughs> if we're talking about the, the, those circles, what I've always wanted to see is the people who made the no-fly list, Venn diagram with the people who have, not top secret, but just secret access in the U.S., because it's... Secret access is, like, a vast majority of military intelligence and all that, mm-hmm. and just the general community, and it's like, Wow, that is a lot of the same people. Would be funny. Well, I mean, secret like what what the government and the military considers secret is all kind like of not like really the aliens. Secret. Yeah, not really that secret. I know aliens? that's that's the whole point. And they're like no fly list, but anyway, Guild Wars two. Yep. Uh, yep. Th- there's, not Terra. There's been a couple of things that have been about. happening since the last time we talked about this between Thanksgiving two and all weeks that. Ago. I hear there was like a new map added that a lot of people talked about and. This dungeon that we can't seem to drag Riven out of. What, what is it? Hmm. No, you're not supposed to give it away. It's supposed to be a secret. Oh yeah. So I, I was supposed to sit here in silence for the next uh, eight minutes until somebody no, eventually. No, talked. you were supposed to be like, "What could it be?" And what then could just it like, be? "Okay, yeah, there I said it." Okay, go, go Who through. Knows? That's your, that's your cue. <laughs> Basically, it, it, anybody who has done the Lost Shores and the, the, the Karka event, we feel your pain. We were there. If you weren't there for it, all the better for you. Yeah, so, fuck that Karka event. moving on. There, there's a new zone with a bunch of giant crab things and other stuff. It's very yeah, cool. Yeah, we're, we're, we're glossing over it because uh, the um, well, actually, uh, what actually happened was the Lost Shores event. Like, there was an invasion of Lion's Arch. I was extremely glitchy because everybody and their moms tried to play during the invasion. I had two FPS yeah, the entire time. It was terrible. Two FPS! The, 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 the Karka did attack, but I think the bigger monster was the Lag Beast. The yeah. Lag, yes. And then, I think that was the invasion that happened. So There was, like, Lag Invasion, and then, it, like, the new zone opened up. Like, you can take ships from Lion's Arch over to the new zone called South Sun Cove. And there was, like, a one-time, like, dynamic event chain. Like you went through the entire zone, like like clearing out the Karka and setting up uh, missed, fortresses and, not, it was so and everything, boring. and it culminated oh, in a uh, giant boss fight against a uh, champion ancient Karka, that who like basically one shot people if you rolled around and you stood in his way. Well, they all one shot people when you yeah, roll. Yeah, they all one shot people when they roll around. This guy Man, took a that, good that one three, shot hours great. to move across the map. Yeah, like you'd be like standing like fifty people, and all of a sudden everybody'd be dead. Just like oh, we couldn't see him rolling because there was slight lag. Because he, or like there he's just playing invisible sometimes. Yeah, I've had cases where Karkar just went invisible because there were too many people. Yeah, like the the, the rendering limitation in the Guild Wars engine was. Extremely apparent during this event because everybody was um, trying to do this event one time because it's a one-time thing. So and unfortunately, like no one wanted to miss it. Yeah, and unfortunately, once you killed the um, once you killed the champ, like big boss at the end, the champion ancient Karka, like you got a chest that had a chance to drop precursors. So that's where all the trouble started. But what's a precursor? Well, I'm glad Why you is asked. Why that so her. important? 
a precursor is one of the um the, the base weapon you need for many of the le- or all of the legendaries. Oh, I want that. I I I was in the the event for like you know three hours, but then got disconnected at the very end. Where's my precursor? Well, what you can do is hop on Reddit and join the. Well, I forgot how many comments it had, but it was like a dozens, huge, literally thread. dozens of people raging. Dozens. Dozens of people. That's raging. like that's like twelve times <laughs> a number. Uh, That's 12, smaller 12 than 10. Two, yeah. <laughs> smaller than 11. Yeah, so basically what happens, like, on certain overflow servers, because um, there, obviously there were so many people trying to get in uh, into the map that multiple overflows were needed to handle the load. Like, certain overflow servers, like, either the event glitched or people had were disconnected. So, like, people uh, who spent hours trying to do the whole event chain didn't receive a reward because they never got to the end. And yep. what Ainit eventually did is like, okay, well, we'll just have, like, we'll just restart the events on multiple overflows. And, well, get, well that, guess what that, happened? That's when a lot of the people who couldn't get it were sort of jumped in line by all the people who had already done it and were trying to do it twice on other characters to try and get another chance at those precursors. Mm-hmm. And so, Fuck yeah. people, man. <laughs> Fuck people. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you. I would Huma- never do humanity like that. would be a lot better if there weren't people. Yeah, just I only did it on three characters. <laughs> only on three characters. <laughs> only. Yeah, just like okay, just well, for people who don't know how rare three. precursors are. Um, like the precursors have a very, very, very low chance to drop from the world because they're they're exotics basically, and they're super exotics. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, that's one exotics. could say. And the only other way you can get like apart from that event, um, the only other way you could get the precursors is from like gambling on the Mystic Forge, because you put four of the same weapon type, either rare or exotic, you get, like, a really low percentage to get a precursor. Yeah. Like, I, um... And yeah. it's, like, the, the game is, like, a, it's a flat, like, there's no gear grind from what they've said, uh, for, like, a pro- uh, progressive tiers of gear and, and higher, like, you know, stuff like that. So, really, what people who like doing PvE they set their their sights for a precursor and building towards a legendary. They want to get one of those really cool looking outfits. It, this is the the really hard way to do it. There's no easy way. There's no direct way. It's rolling the dice every single time. Yeah, and like like it or not, like getting a legendary is pretty much and and the end game in Guild Wars two, aside from like fractals, which we'll talk about later on. But essentially, for most people um, who will never touch a fractals, um, get. A, Slowly grinding and gathering materials up for your legendary, which the stats don't isn't much isn't any stronger than an exotic. Last time I checked, it just it just looks like, so much cooler. I have a legendary. Yeah, like it's I a status. Think, symbol. I think they said legendaries are they're always going to be best in slots. So, I mean, you could just get that, and then you never have to worry about getting another weapon unless you want to change weapons. Yeah, yeah. but let's be honest, most people are get, trying to get them because of the cool skins. Yeah, I don't think yeah. people give a sh- give a shit about the damage of the legendary. Uh, like some people who are like you know the the theory builders and like they want to get every last bit of damage, but for the most like part, in PVE, it doesn't really matter. It, it's a ten no. percent boost. Right. I don't know. It's not worth it. It's not worth the time. Yep. Yeah, and like I'd rather piss blood. Yeah, it's just to close off a Lost Shores event. Like we're not talking much about the actual event itself or what went on because. It was like really laggy, and honestly, like it was like, the event was all right. There really wasn't much going I, on, but just I'll people do, trying we could to just push do a super summary. That's one hundred. Parts of that event went on way oh. too lo- longer than it should have. Oh fuck! fuck. <laughs> just like us talking. Yeah, just one dynamic event to another, which none of which were particularly interesting apart from kill this. It's, kill it was this. literally <laughs> kill this, kill that, the end. Yeah. I don't know that that part where we had to fight back waves of Karka was really stood out among the rest. Oh, oh, and then there were like these Karka. That like you had to hit to kill, and then like shit. And oh, by the way, this Karka, like you, one on one, they're really tough. Ne- they are pretty tough. Yeah, and then like you try to get like the veteran Karka, and they're just like you need like at least. 10 oh, and they time. have like you, you, you bring them down to full, he- like you bring them down the entire health bar, and then their health resets because apparently that's supposed to be like their shell. Oh yeah, like yeah, like Arena Net was making a big bus, so like yeah, like these Karka, you have to learn like. Browse the world and learn how to defeat them, and then like they like yeah they they said they'll introduce special effects because the carcass have shells, so it's basically a second life bar. Like their shells will break off and they kill them again, basically. Like all that. Oh shit! I remember. 
like all that sounds like a what is better it concept. Oh. But when you're actually doing it, like none of like exploring world stuff really mattered. It's just fucking annoying. And it's just like oh, annoying. God. The monster has two health bars. Right. And all basically, right. what happened in my instance what, for the first part of the invasion was there's like this boss Karka that we had to kill, but he was outside of the dynamic event circle, so he was invincible. Just plain invincible. Why? Why? Oh, yeah, like this city. Yeah, like, for the invasion, like people didn't get that like, if you kited the uh, ch- like ancient Karka away from like dynamic event where it's supposed to be, like he just right. he's just straight up invisible, in- in- invincible yep. rather. So like you just like everybody's like yelling oh. at each other, like no, pull it back, no, let's fight it here. Oh. I think we're doing damage, blah blah blah. So it was, it was piss poor. Yeah, piss poor performance. Piss poor performance. Yeah, I, I hope Arena learned a lot from that, and I, I don't think they're going to be doing any one-time events very soon, because just given the, the recent track record between a, a cutscene that caused everyone woe and hardships with the dungeon, like not being able to get in there at the same time because there's so many people waiting for something awesome, and then this headache, I'm hoping they don't do uh, one-time events. Yeah, like there's a whole bunch of other issues, like people like obviously like justifiably pissed off, um... Like they had to work or had something come up and they missed out on a one time event. Or just not their time zone with folks in the, the uh Yeah, the Oceanic. Oceanic, yeah. Oceanic they had like playing ungodly hours to like like four in the yeah. morning. And then like other issues like they also wanted to introduce a scavenger hunt, which that was also part of the event. And the reasons why we're oh, not fuck. talking about that, because it was just straight up broken. <laughs> yeah, it, it, they didn't get it working until after the one time event. Fuck me Ani. <laughs> fuck me Ani. Oh, fuck sent me that entire like Mystic sent... Forge shit. I lost so much money and time on that stupid Mystic Forge shit. God damn Explain it! The Mystic Forge he shit. sent me at least a hundred emails. I-, I have I have this um screenshot of basically what you could do is after Lion's Arch was attacked, they wanted you to make Lion's Arch relief kits, right? And basically, so what you needed was this ri- Lion's Arch relief token, whatever. And a weapon, um, a material, or whatever, whatever it was, it was like weapon armor or some expensive, or a piece of any piece of gear. And basically, it's like, oh, sick! I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make easy money off of this. So I went ahead and bought six hundred spears, like <laughs> level one spears. And then it took me about four hours to get rid. Yeah, of Yeah, because like you can only it pick was... them up one by one from the uh. T- yeah, you could pick them up one by one, and. Fuck and that! I have this screenshot. Oh god! Yeah, man. it turned out so he didn't bad. noob didn't need so six hundred spears to no, do that I stuff. And in the end, like that, like that scavenger, like trade, like um, it's just broken. Like no, it wasn't broken. Like the reward was so the, dumb. It was like five of the commendations and a jug of karma. Yeah. So oh, the jug of karma is pretty. Yeah, like sweet. after yeah. after you do like um the whole Mystic Forge stuff uh with Biani, like you turn it like you get commendations right, which are like one time only tokens you get for the event. For uh, contributing towards the cause, whatever, and like they're still they're still in the oh, game. Yeah, I guess they're still in the game, but nobody's really getting them anymore because people have realized it's just a gold sink, and the rewards you get for those commendations are pretty crummy. They're basically line guard weapons with a superior like sigil of like Kraka sl- slaying. That's about it. I mean, the, I mean, uh, you can get those two hundred and fifty use crafting thing, not uh, salvaging things. Oh yeah, and you can also get like the two hundred fifty use uh, mining materials, right? Mining and gathering. Yeah, yeah. I've yep. I have a two hundred fifty use pick and logging axe. Yeah, but arguably, I don't think it's worth the time or the money to invest in that, unless you're really, really like, like, uh, constrained on space in your bags, I guess. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck yeah. this. I I honestly hope that uh, what is it called? Winner's Day doesn't have this shit. That would be so nice. Keep pushing. Know. You know Keep it's going to have it. It's... That is a lot of spears. Yeah. Good lord. Yeah, like, I, I think um, Winter's Day is going to end up more like the Halloween event. Um, well, I love the Halloween yeah. event. I thought the Halloween event was great. It just, this one, nah. They, they to have the bulk of the Halloween support. events were done much, much better, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair. That said, and Halloween event was less of a one-time, like, continuous quest chain where people are all rushing to get it. It was more just a bunch of new zones that were open for the duration of time. Yeah, mm-hmm. to be fair, like and I think that was better. Halloween event did have broken things. Like I remember, like the labyrinth wasn't working when it first started. Um, and the and one of the sca- the scavenger hunt yeah. quests. Again, the scavenger hunts were bugged again. Surprise. 
but but at the same time, it's like there was so much other things you could like do s- during the event that people weren't just focusing on that. And I think because this was only a quest chain and like a new zone, but at the same time, that new zone wasn't amazing. And yeah, I don't know. All right, but I get think the most or one of the most important things that come out of this large horse event is definitely the new dungeon that was implemented. Yeah, it's a ribbon. That's oh, all yeah. that matters. Do you want to talk about this? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Let's let, let's talk about this because. Uh, I think I think we have uh, be- between you, me, and, uh, and Riven, we have three different opinions on this new dungeon, the Fractals of the Mists. Um, what 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 is their reasoning for this? They just wanted to add a bunch of mini dungeons, I guess. Well, like the whole um, conceit behind the du- new dungeons is that, or story rather, is that like you have to go back in time and go to these various events and correct the time flow. You know, some of them are from the stuff. future, aren't they? Maybe some of them we might. We don't be really know. Dimensions. It's just I, I think Arena just wanted to do like they had really good ideas for things that were bigger than mini dungeons, but not quite actual dungeons. Things they couldn't like fights they wanted to do that couldn't be in the the yeah. Guild Wars Two game. Mm-hmm. Uh, like one of them is you're fighting in like Guild Wars One. Yeah, you're times. fighting like one of the coolest ones I think because like you get like every time you enter you get a random set of three uh three mi- dungeons. And one of the coolest ones, my favorite ones at, le- at least, is you're going back in time to the like, Good Wars 1 event, like during the Scar... Uh, what's the Scar... Searing. Searing. Yeah, the, Searing. The Char one? Searing. The Char one, yeah. 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 Now that I, I guess we should explain the dungeon total, first, right? I guess. Yeah, um, there are uh, nine total. Yeah. So Tell basically, yeah. this is like um, the kind of an endless dungeon, quote-unquote. It's not really endless as in there's new content, but more like it scales up in difficulty. So basically what this is is... Each, every time you enter the Fractals dungeon, um, it's basically s- sort of like a regular dungeon. You're put into a lobby with the five people you're within, and then you jump into the dungeon, and then it gives you a random set of three dungeons. So every so these dungeons, I, can you help me list them? So there's the ch- Char Searing one. So basically you've gone back, you've transformed into Char, and you're in the Searing. Second one is... Um, is you're trying to free this giant, like this giant... Yeah, the person. Dr. Manhattan. Board, <laughs> yeah, right? you don't know what Dr. Manhattan. Is. Giant Dr. Manhattan, and you're basically... All of them are very different and unique, which I think is really cool. Um, so you're destroying things with a uh, hammer that you have to drop every few minutes, otherwise you're going to get... or you die. Um, what, there's a dredge one where you have to fight dredge. Uh, there's the underwater playing? one. There's the underwater there's one, which basically... You turn into a shark and dolphin. then you get raped by a bunch well, of no, that, that's, that's got two different dolphins. That's, that's got two different paths. So yeah, there's red ones. Oh yeah. Okay, again, again, dolphin. these these aren't the same missions over and over again. I guess there are different routes and things that are yeah, different. The, each environment was the same, but you get different variations right. on the same dungeon. Like the underwater one, exactly. for instance. Like in the end, you will fight a giant jellyfish, and it is the most boring fight in the Fuck world. That jellyfish fight. Oh but, yeah. Um, like you can you press there, one and then all tab. Like one way, one path is you get changed to dolphins, and you have like very like all you can do is run away. And you have to like. I do like I do like the idea of the whole echo thing. It it, it is campy and it it, uh, it is nice. Mm-hmm. But the other one, the darkness path, is just the so dark, cool. I prefer the darkness path over yeah, the and the other path. As a guy who has yeah. done those paths a couple of times, I prefer the darkness one to the dolphin yeah. one. I've like when I actually did fractals, I quite enjoyed the darkness one because they were like it's all about speed and timing, which I enjoyed. Well, for folks um, who haven't done it and folks who haven't done like the dark room, what is the darkness? Why why is it so cool? So basically, the darkness is. You you you're halfway through the dungeon, and then you come into this deep deep area of the ocean. I guess this is deep ocean or whatever they called it, and the entire area is completely dark. And what you have to do is you have to pick up these plants that let you have light. Otherwise, piranhas will come up and fuck you up. So the point is to rush in, get grab the thing, and then get to the nearest uh, geyser, I guess, which emits light to keep it's away like a, the piranhas. It's a, it's a, like a... An illuminous plant or something, right? If it, what they actually call it, but you can also grab that and move with it, but it'll yeah. wear off after about a good five. So you have to really, yeah. yeah. Actually, so you have to it, really if, rush. From if point I recall, to point. what it was is like it is. It's it's pitch black, so you can't see anything. No. And when you go into the darkness, there's more or less just like piranha fish that just show yeah. up and just start eating you, and you, you lose. have to carry the light if you don't. Yeah. yeah. The what, problem it's with the, that dungeon really is they don't much. explain it very well. They don't. When you get into that dungeon, you have no idea about what the hell's going on. You just die. Yeah, it, it, is, get it is a trial by fire. But like it's... a lot of a lot of them, I felt were very badly explained in just general. I think a, a lot of them were like that. It's just we had uh, 
the betas to get us like a, a good foot foothold into like how do has AC work and how does right. uh, a couple of these other ones work. Um. So what else? My but, favorite dungeon yeah. is probably the there's this winter dungeon where you have to uh, fight the sons of Savanir. And basically, the whole point of this is to carry. You have to. There are big bonfires you have to run around, and basically, being out in the cold means you get stacked with frostbite. And if you stay out in the cold too long, you're going to die from frostbite. So the, it's the idea is going from bonfire to bonfire, lighting the bonfire, getting warmth, and then running. And the middle boss fight in that is the coolest middle boss fight I've ever done, or just oh, boss fight in is, general. That thing is fucked on higher difficulties. Yeah, but it's just so much fun. I like that one the best, probably. That's the, probably my favorite boss fight in the games. Well, are, um, are we missing any, uh, JKC? No, no, there's definitely more. Um, there's the Grawl yeah, one. The Grawl one. The Grawl the fire one. Ramp. Um, how much dredge? There's at? the Radit. Oh, there's, there's a Radisum the... one where. Yeah. Oh, that Radisum one kind of makes me sad because it's just like abandoned and the single is. It's like um, alone, the sor- craziest hero. There's yeah, robots. This with this robot. My favorite part is like when you go there, the chick is like, "Oh, it, what's her name?" Dessa is like, "Wait, oh, hold on, I need a minute." Just go on, because yeah. she's so like she realizes where you are. Yeah, it's so sad. Um, yeah, and so basically, you you get a random pick out of these three, um, out of the total nine, and then you have to complete these dungeons in one run through, and then you get to the second level. And basically, so you do two sets of these, and once you co- come to the end of the second level, there's a like a surprise dungeon waiting for you at the last set, and that's basically. Um, it's like a boss fight that, what is it called? What is that called? Um, Jade, Jade Maw. Maw. Yeah, Jade Maw. Jade Maw, right. And it's this giant tentacle, it's very, like, Lovecraftian. Do you guys, like, could you guys see that? Like, Yeah, it's very it, it is very Lovecraftian, yeah. yeah. Like, basically yeah. the whole fight is you, like, you kill stuff, and then, um, the main boss, like, shoots a giant laser at you, and you have to pick up reflecting crystals, which store the energy that he shoots at you, and you throw it back at him, do deal damage to him. But if you fail to do so, like you get one hit, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You you get one thrown hit. on the ground if you are not on top of your game mm-hmm. with. Right. And there's, there's you can do- so, you can dodge it, and if you have anything that'll make you invulnerable, that'll work as well. Yeah, and like yeah. Uh, around um, around the boss, there's tentacles or monster. Like you, tentacles are the main thing because they they knock you down, and like you should be killed as fast as possible. There yeah. there's ads because those yeah. colossus so killing too. killing the tentacles also does damage to him. Oh, did not know that. Yeah, yeah. So actually, um, Riven, um, could you like explain more about like how the like the fractals of the abyss gets harder as you like complete uh, more and more of these dungeons? They spawn. Yeah, how how do the levels enemies. work? They spawn a bit more enemies every t- uh every few levels. They raise the amount of damage they do when they hit you. Cause all right, on fractal one in the searing one, when three warriors rush at you, you you can probably you you you'll survive it. On Fractal 20, when three warriors rush at you, you roll or you die. Because once they hit you, you're dead. Okay, so why don't you just respawn and run back? Because there is no... The only way to respawn is for everyone to die. Yeah, there are checkpoints in these dungeons. It's just like sometimes they bug out. So it's, it's in everybody's ideal ideal interest to not die. Just in terms of making, going through... Oh, yeah, fuck. Possible. The bugging out is the worst part. There's a bunch of jumping puzzle ones. And... Basically, oh. the idea is if you fall oh, off, gosh. you get down, and then you get teleported. But if you fall off in the wrong place, you'll be dead on a like an edge, and then no one can revive you. Oh, so I every, know what your we entire team has to wipe. It's so stuff like that the, ruins it for me. We, we didn't talk about the, the swamp either. Oh yeah, oh, fuck that swamp. <laughs> that's actually that's actually one of the easier ones because well, that's the easier one when everyone knows what they're doing. If yeah. they don't, it's the worst ever of all yeah. time ever. And they, do, anyway. they do add new mechanics later on, like um, for the Ratasoom one. The Harpies get AoE knockbacks. Yeah, so you try to do a jump uh, puzzle and they knock you back. You mean, you mean the Harpies you're yeah. fighting on little pieces of like floating rock in the middle, like, and, and if you get knocked off, you're falling in the middle of nowhere. Those Harpies. Yes, yes. I mean those Harpies. Doesn't sound like you fun. Are. It's not. Uh, also, for the old Tom fight in that one, you know, with the the robot asura that spins around and shoots poison. Mm-hmm. You know how when you activated the fan, you could just run over there and activate it. On higher difficulties, you have to run crystals to the so- to the other things, put those in there, and then you can activate the fan. I don't know what there's those a- crystals were for. Yeah, and there's a finite number of crystals. Okay, so don't don't screw up. Sweet. 
Yeah. So like we've talked a lot about like what the practice, like what the various dungeons are and everything. But I think like we should be also talking about um like what you get from these dungeons specifically. Because it's it's something that you cannot get in any other dungeon or any other thing in the game as of right now, at least. What what Descended what is that? Gear. Descended gear. Well, besides, well, yeah. Well, first of all, like you get um because uh with the new Lost Shores patch, uh, Arena Net introduced a new tier of gear uh in between exotics and legendaries, called um ascending gear, and these ascending gear obviously had better stats than exotics, and more importantly. Um, you need an ascending gear to uh, negate, like, have uh, agony resistance. And uh, the agony, uh, Ribbon, do you want to explain, like, briefly explain agony? It, uh, agony, it starts when you get to Fractal 10. And when, a, like, when boss hits you, when a boss hits you with certain attacks, it'll put a debuff on you that'll tick off. If you don't have any agony resistance, it'll probably take off about an eighth of your health. And you Ow. can't cleanse it. Yeah. So this is damage they're going to be taking, and it's it's way it's more than you're able to heal. On, it, you can heal through it. I've healed through agony before. Yeah, like this. I'm just, I'm just. It's just sometimes there are attacks that you can't avoid, or that have like very, very small windows and are very, very finicky. Like the dredge mining suit, I have dodged oh. the AOE that AOE Stompy does. I instead evaded. I've evaded the damage from the stomp, yet still got an agony. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, like it was. Yeah. It was originally a mechanically introduced in the first Guild Wars, and um, they uh, brought it back for the uh, Fractals of the Mists. So um, I personally have an issue with just like that whole mechanic. But first, I guess I want to talk about the other rewards that you get from the Fractals of the Mists, which is. You get tokens for completing uh, each. Uh, is it at the end of every set of three fractals? Am I correct? It's that you get uh, you get five. You get five at the end of every fractal, and it that number slowly goes up the higher you get. Because I think on twenty when I can comp- when I was completed twenty two, I think I got nine tokens out of every chest, minus the jade moth. Yeah. So and those fractals, uh, those uh, tokens rather, can be uh, redeemed for various items. Uh, like various uh, infusion uh, recipes or pieces of like more put like like twenty bag like twenty slot bags, and more importantly uh, obsidian shards, which are also uh, an ingredient you need and for skill points legendaries. and skill points. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm cool. Um. So and it, it you get uh, a couple of cool things as well as like you know the gift of ascension, which gets you this uh, ascended gear, and you said it was it was better than. Like it, it was, it was a new tier of stuff. Yeah, like so the stats like are about like five to eight percent higher than exotics. Yeah, this sounds a lot like grinding for higher yes, tier stuff. It we is. We arrive at the other uh, controversial point, which is like a lot of people. Like once um, they announced sending gear, or like Reddit was in another firestorm, where uh, people were complaining like how Reddit. they're introducing a, a vertical gear grind. It just yeah, is always sure. in a firestorm. Yeah, sure. Guild Wars Arena said they wouldn't be doing anything like this. And it sounds like a lot of gear grinds. Yeah, to be fair, um, they it seems it sounds like they intended to have this uh, this tier of gear when they launched a the game, but probably ran out of time or something. Who knows? Right. But in the end, uh, they they said specifically we will not be adding any more tiers after this ascended gear. And legendaries, obviously, because apparently there are plans for legendary gear uh, armor down the line. I mean, to be fair, I don't think this is. I, I don't know. It's like if you don't want to do it, you can very well do perfectly fine in the game with full exotic gear. Like, I don't see a situation being like if you're not wearing ascended gear, you're not really gonna survive here. Well, the thing, so, the thing is, like, you forget about agony. Uh, that's the issue I have in agony. Is that if you want to access the higher um, tiers of the fractals of the mist and get higher rewards from chest drops and whatnot, and get a shot, a better shot at accessing the cool new weapons they introduce, the new um, new skins, the fractal skins, fractal right. weapon skins, you have to have like you, you basically have to have. But a at the same time, you gear. get ascended gear by doing them. Yeah, so like by doing the dungeon, it's not like you have to do something else. Mm, to get ascended not gear really. I mean, you can, but it takes forever. Yeah, because. Uh, Unfortunately, the it's way gonna, you like, get ascending you... gear is through RNG. So, do you want to explain that, Ruben? 
uh, at the end, there's just there's like tiers. It's uh one through nine, nine, a ten to nineteen, twenty to twenty nine. Each each set counts as a tier, and every time you defeat the Jade Maw inside of that tier, you get a chest, and from ten up, it has a chance of dropping an ascended ring, that you can use to. That, that you know you can infuse to get ag- to get agony resistance and from yeah, twenty up because right now there's might... only two pieces that are ascended right two types yeah ring yeah. and um... ring and back piece okay yeah and uh, riding think... more later on apparently yeah and from level twenty up you have a chance to have the ring be pre infused and there's also a chance that you get a fractal weapon skin pretty cool that is pretty cool pretty so cool are, are they are they adding more like just higher level, so it's like twenty, like uh, thirty to thirty-nine, like another tier with two more weapons than that one. No, I think at twenty you just always. I think at twenty it just opens up another loot table for the daily drop. So they're just gonna keep adding more stuff in like the level twenty to twenty-nine, uh, in terms of more uh, ascended items, like you know boots or something. Uh, I don't know. Maybe or maybe you'll just use the tokens. Well, they said they were going to do a whole set, but I mean, like, are like, where are they going to put these? Theoretically, they could put them from thirty to thirty-nine, and then forty to forty-nine. Yeah, and which sucks because, like, you progress further and further on into the fractals, get like thirty to thirty-nine or whatever. Like the agony, like, I believe the agony like damage increases, right? Yep. Oh yeah. yeah so like, and to you get that agony, you need to get um the gear and have it infuse the agony resistance. And uh, unfortunately, you can get rings on the back pieces right now. Like it's an RNG tra- like chest drop, which isn't affected by magic yeah, fund. It, so like, there's for twenty, you basic for twenty, you kind of need fifteen agony resist. Yeah, and there, there's been people who've been running like level ten, twenty or level ten like uh fractals like over and over again without getting anything, getting the ascending gear. Yet with my luck, I have four rings and a fractal yeah. rifle. Yeah, so like not everybody has your luck ribbon. So well, I, I don't know how many fractals have you run, sir. Doesn't matter because I can only you can only get that chest once a day. Yeah, but yeah. you've run a, a, a lot. Hundred and seventy one, I want to say. I've done like a dozen. I've done probably a dozen yeah, as well. Same. Yeah, all in the first weekend. I had some bad pugs. I had a bad time. I'm still like level. Dude, I four. you say so, bad pugs, but me and Cynic got the furthest with pugs. Like I think we got the furthest in the guild using pugs for what on the I'm first still, weekend. I'm still using pugs. Like pugs, if you get a good group, man, pugs are pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. And that's like yeah. that's the issue I have with the the, the way the fractals are designed. Like agony aside, which I, in my I argue does not reward skill, relying on the RNG drop. To proceed further and further in. You, all right, you can make it pretty far with no agony. You can make it to uh, yeah, 15, but with any pug with no agony pick resistance, you up if you have no uh, agony resistance, that far, that deep yeah. in. I'm actually seeing like yeah, you know people after, looking for group after, and like no after twenty magic after find 20, gear. You like could, after twenty, you should probably have some agony resistance. Yeah, and besides the point, Lowell, it's like the way like you progress further and further into fractals by completing like level like doing it over and over again so you level up. Like, you can't play with friends. Like, not everybody's going to be like, oh, uh, sorry, Riven. But not everybody's going to have, like, the same amount of time Riven has. And you, to find five people who have, like, the same amount of time, and this is a lot of coordination. And what ends up happening is, like, you just end up pugging um, the fractals. And you got to pray. I feel, like, I feel like this is very much going to be, like, Hero's Ascent in the original Guild Wars, where it got to the point where people, you're, you're never going to find the group if you're jumping into it late. Because everyone's going to be, look, LFG. Fractals level twenty, when and no one's gonna accept a level one into their group, and I think that's a big problem that Arena I, has to somehow yeah, address. It goes against the core, like one of the like, core philosophies, like they uh, design the games. Like, yeah, we design this game around uh, reward skill, and which we can still play with our friends, all of your friends, almost, almost, depending on what you're doing. So, like, it's just, like this, is, like, ga- like the way they gated the um the participation in these fractals. Like, it's so hard to play, like, like. Like Ribbon and Shinboy now, just because we all have like various different schedules, and like we can't like even if we did um say oh, okay well we'll like get like Shinboy's like fractal levels up so he can eventually like go like play with the rest of us, but by the time you do that then like um like something happens and you're behind again it's just way too hard to right. play with your friends. Well yeah, and, and the whole idea of uh 
Guild Wars has been like uh, people get either get down leveled or like you know like so you're still able to spend time with your friends, but with this more than any of the other systems, it really feels like you're pulling the rest of your friends down. Right. Like you're 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 a detriment to them because it's they like are, there's a second level system added yeah. onto the current existing level system and one that's even harder to bridge the gap because the rewards for people coming down are so small that people are just it's not worth it for yeah, them. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I, I don't mind the like I I appreciate the fact that they added a new dungeon and pretty some pretty right. cool cool ones. I, I I would like I would like to say. But the problem is is that um like you play MMOs to play with other people and if it's like forcing us like to go from like like from, from very casual like exploring the world doing love love um like get gallery match with legendaries or just running AC, like none of those things like require like a huge amount of time investment and coordination. And as then like, suddenly we get this hardcore oriented dungeon, which right. to progress further further in, like we need like to rely on RNG and like, whatnot. I understand they're like walking a very fine line between accessibility and uh, something that's challenging, and it rewards players for doing what they do, and you know keep keeping on playing but at the same time like they should have maybe i'm not saying they should but like it would have been nice if it was very more accessible to people that aren't yeah. constantly putting in the hours that they might have put in when the game came out and yeah, now they like, have other games to play like i i yeah again like i i, I see like where they're like they want to they need something to appease the people who want to like end game content yeah. besides farming for a legendary that's understandable but you can still design an endless dungeon without having to rely on these convoluted mechanics. Like, I'm. It's great they've released some, something like this that's like perfect endgame content because it never ends and <laughs> it's gonna go on forever. But I don't know. Well, and By and it, also with this, like with this setup, they do have the capacity to just add in more fights. Right. And like endgame, as in like when you finish the game and you're like level eighty now, this isn't endgame. Once people are up in their own levels of like level 30, it's going to be hard to use this as a proper end game when no one's going to be playing this with you. So I think I see a problem with just new players or people who don't spend much time in general ever being able to play this. Yeah, properly. like I like I would not be considered a casual quote unquote player of Guild Wars because I do spend a, quite a number of, like I have like sometimes like uh, I would say about 667 hours of Guild Wars played. Even I don't have like the time um, to invest into running fractals constantly, make sure I stay leveled with Ribbon or anybody else, you know? It's just like, it's it's uh, artificial uh, gaining mechanic that just shouldn't be there. Like, if they really wanted to make like make it challenging, they could like introduce mechanics that evolved over time as you did them. So you could still do them with your friends. Or, or maybe something that resets, I don't know. That wouldn't be nice. Like, a monthly reset at least? I don't know. I, I guess not, but something that lets me not have to type in LFG for a good hour before finding a group. Yeah, either way, like yeah, yeah, like the like the fact that they haven't still haven't added an LFG like working LFG system for dungeons and whatnot, like still baffles me. The fact that someone had to make a website for this game so people could find an easy way. To yeah, we should find we should group. plug that website by the way. Back yeah, idea. that website's fucking awesome. Is, is, um, we'll we'll uh, throw it up at the end when we do plugs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So all these. Complaints and and just issues, and many 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 more were raised either on the official forums or on Reddit, uh, like the Guild Wars 2 Reddit, and they uh, Reinet finally responded with uh, one of their studio designers, uh, Chris, see about Chris Whiteside, Whiteside, basically saying well, he's like going to do an a- fuckhead. Yes, <laughs> uh, he, he's the studio designer director at ArenaNet, basically saying he's going to do an AMA. Uh, Pretty much revolving around the Lost Shores and the uh, like, the, the whole uh, Ascension thing and the fractals. And first off, I want to say hats off to this guy because he like he didn't do it for a couple hours. He did it from like noon until nine or ten o'clock at night after he had went home, uh, and he was still like responding to folks. And a, a lot of the responses were basically based off of. Uh, the, the ascension, ascended gear, fractals of the mist, and like the whole tiered system. And what the general response was, it was, it was a lot of repeating and going back and forth. But 
they wanted this in at the beginning of the game and then just didn't have time to ship it. So they weren't really trying to make tiers, and this is actually something that has a lot of people worried. They don't plan on having any more tiered content for this expansion. What do you mean expansion? Or I'm sorry, for this, like, uh, until the next expansion, I guess is a good way to put it, for this version of the game. I'm fine with that, considering that, expansion that can't makes... be more than two years uh, old. It's, the, 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 there is, like, talk, and they have, like, it's, they're sort of hinting at the fact that when the next expansion, or when the first expansion hits, there will be, like, a, the level cap will raise up some, and there will be another tier of gear or something like that. that that's completely fine. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's fine. If, if it's a new expansion, sure, but doing it in the existing game, what, like, four months, three months after release? No, thank you. Yeah. Um, but then uh, also the... Uh, they, they, they admit that the... the, the leveling system wasn't the best idea and it is creating issues in the uh, community, but they're not really having a good time to... Uh, they're, they're not thinking of a good way to uh, counter this or to replace it. Yeah, like again, we, we can complain all we has. want, but I, I don't have any good ideas on how to fix it. I'm just complaining, saying fix it. I, That's... I, I think... <laughs> I, was well, like, I was like... They know they need to fix it. Sort of yeah. scouring through the... Th- through some of the things on that uh, AMA, and I think one of the suggestions was you make it like you make it so you can do a one to five. You can you can do anything that's within like five fractals of you. That's still too way too big of a gap when people are in their twenties or thirties. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There, there, there's yeah, the, the issue. There's no it, easy way to fix the the hole they dug themselves in. Yeah, like the issue with that is that the guy who is like. Level thirty fractals trying to help out his friend who's level twenty five to say, he isn't getting any forward progress, and if people don't nope. have the incentive to uh, help out their friends, other than the fact that they're friends, you know, it's just like yeah, like people like like Ribbon said, like he he would help me out with my fractals because I'm still stuck on five, but the thing is like people like it's still need more like it still sucks that Ribbon has to help me out, you know. Yeah, right. He has to bend down and pick. Pick JKC up, and I have no, no I, like, I have no issue doing that because I kind of hit a wall with these fractals. Where if I don't find people who I trust or want or want to run these fractals with, I'm going to stab someone in this community over a fucking fractal. And now you know how I feel with the low tier of pugging. Really, I like pugs. Pugs are nice. I just, I just had bad pugs luck. Pugs are adorable, were... unlike real pugs. We did like a level three, and somehow because by the way, you can do this at like you can do the fractal of the mist at level two. Like if your character is level two, you get bumped yeah, up you to get eighty. Get leveled up, yeah. And yeah. somehow a level thirty had made it into like level three fractals. Carried, carried. Probably. Oh, actually, the first le- first couple levels. Well, it's I, I know we had to carry him because we he died <laughs> a lot, like a lot, a lot. Dude, you you were listening to me earlier when I was doing that fractal. Where the dude was naked halfway through it. Yeah, well, it's uh, there, there's no repair in the fractals. Once well, you start it, there is no turning back unless you want to yeah, reset, you restart. The whole, the or, you, or you could take like a repair thing, whatever. It's repair called, canister. Repair. Yeah. yeah, you can. That is actually bring... so useful in those fractals. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but going. They are. They are. Uh, like making use of the the gem store and the the yeah. black line chests, which by the yeah. way they finally released the um, hair re- like redo kits and basically you can make over your kits. entire yeah, yeah make makeover over. kits. Still so, not you can. There's the regular makeover and then extreme makeover where you can change your gender yeah. for those inclined. I think the rest of the stuff is just going to be a, a random show up in the uh, black line chests, but I'm not open to any of those until Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Just in case. Whoa. I'm not I'm not wasting any of my keys. I think I have Another eight keys in the bank. Example. Yeah. I have but, no keys. Uh, there well. was one uh, little gem that he talked about that sort of slipped. Uh, when, when people ask, like, are, are these Ascended Gear only going to be available in uh, in the, the Fractals of the Mist? And he's like, no, we're going to try and put these in other dungeons and world versus world. Which didn't sort of make sense for me. Because first off, the, if it's going to be in World vs. World, it's probably going to be like a thousand badges of jumping. I mean, uh, 
Badges, badges of, of honor. Badges of honor. Yes, a thousand badges of jumping. Pretty much badges of jumping. <laughs> but it's like, okay, but then it's like the whole point of the Ascended Gear is to be the agony mechanic, right? Uh, you could just not have an infusion yeah, slot just on it. Don't infuse agony resistance. Just infuse like a, uh, another offensive or defensive uh, infusion. But the Ascended Gear is the only stuff that has the option to do infusions. Yes. So people like people who do who, who their goal is Fractal of the Mist are going to be coming into World vs. World just not, to get... Not if it takes a thousand tokens, like you're saying. This, these people are doing a hundred some odd fractals just to yeah, but get the to the next level. Yeah, but the thing about fractals is that, again, the rewards, you get tokens for completing it, and more importantly, you get drops, like trust drops. Like It's the yeah. most reliable way of getting um, lodestones, for instance, which are required for legendaries, and we'll talk more about lodestones later, but they are the oh, hardest yeah. part of legendaries to get. So, I don't know. Trying to get Balthazar to work is pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. No. Talk about later. Talk about it a little bit. A little yeah. bit later. But uh, they, they've also said that they're going to. Tr- they're planning on redoing a lot of the, uh, dun- like dungeons in like uh, Ascalon Catacombs, uh, Codicus Manor. They're they're planning on redoing all those and maybe. I don't care if they redo that dungeon. I'm never setting foot in it again. <laughs> it's gonna be much much worse than it is right now. You have no idea. You wish you could go back to the old Codicus Manor. But no, and then putting uh, Ascended Gear in there. So that that is that is some hopeful news, I guess. But when? They they haven't even said anything like that. And they still haven't implemented guesting, which has me a little bit bitter. Yeah, the biggest thing you can get from the I AMA... Think, I think guesting is probably on the back burner at this yeah. point. Like, the biggest thing you can get from the... the uh, uh, Chris Whiteside's AMA on Reddit is that they, they didn't use it to get information. They wanted to get more details from the community about how they felt about the game so far. Because a lot of his answers are, yeah, we'll look into it, and yeah, that's a good question type kind of answers. Yeah, and, and a lot of it was as he was just putting out fires and just talking again about Ascended Gear, which that is pretty much what the point of that AMA was, but the community's got a lot more issues than just ascended gear. Oh, yeah, talking to uh, necros and the two hundred fifty bugs, class bugs. Yeah, and like there, there's apparently a post on the like the necro forums that's like, this is our running list of bugs. Can we get any response from you guys? Mm-hmm. And if, if any arena people are listening, please just start talking to the community because we like this game. I don't like this game. Yeah, I also I, hate arena net. I hope you all die, fuckers. Yeah, don't worry, I'll be too noob. Yep. <laughs> It's a tough love. It is. You know, your child doesn't understand how much you love him until you beat him repeatedly. With a stick. You break Never him change, noob. Like Never change. Like a horse. You break him like a horse. So you, you eventually ride him like a horse? Yes. And when he breaks a bone, you shoot him in the head? Back home back home <laughs> in North Korea, you old people are always riding young people like horses because... You know, you've disciplined your child. Yeah, young, young people are also used because um, their, all the cattle died off in the Great Famine of uh, 1959. So the young people are used to pull plows and see the land. Oh, that Great Famine wasn't that long ago. It was probably like in the 90s, 94, 96 maybe. Oh, the, the, you talked about the Great Famine uh, of Clinton, where like Clinton was the one responsible for causing single, single-handedly causing all the crops in North Korea to die. Clinton, oh, God. New no, Jersey no. or what? I don't want to explain it, but it's really ridiculous because how how this ro- the thing happened was basically basically uh, North Korea is like a very mountainous region, so a good idea is to get like mountain goats to graze on things. It's like a really e- easy way of providing food, like goat milk, goat cheese, etc. And basically, what those goats did is they removed all of like plantation to the point that erosion happened all over. North Korea, and that caused like flooding and destroyed all of the farmlands, and that's how famine was started. That's really that's sad. how famine was started. The history of famine. <laughs> oh, okay, in North Korea. Well, it, it's 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 comforting to know it's it's a recent development with yep. you know the Clinton administration. But going back to Guild Wars Two, uh, I guess, I guess we can just jump to the next topic after that really weird left turn. Just the story from back home. Yeah, yeah it just, uh, well, it, it's because back home, it's, that's you went home for Thanksgiving in North right. Korea. North Korean Thanksgiving. It's important to Korean keep our history in mind. You think 
You thank your glorious leader for the food he put on your table. Dear, dear mm-hmm. leader. Dear exactly. leader. And, and for the table that the north that the chorus leader provided. And the house no, that he put over your head. Tables. No, there's no house. It's, on the, floor. it's the tables outside. It's a, it's a oh. not really a widely known fact about dear leader, but he is. North Koreans do thank him every single time they wake up for life. Because he's the one who gave yeah. them life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's true. He also gave you guys life. Yeah, legendary items. That's really why we brought JKC on to the podcast is because he and, and many other people are trying to get legendary, especially after the, the bunch of precursors. Yeah, so after the Lost Shores event, which dropped like a whole, like people got a large a large amount of precursors from the chest at the yeah. end of the dynamic. That, event. Is, that is one of the good things of the Lost Shores event that we can't take away from that. The price of and the, and the availability of precursors on the trading post is went like much more towards yeah. the buyer's Just favor. Just like give everybody context. Um, for instance, Dawn, which is the precursor for Sunrise, the Great Sword yeah. uh, legendary that uh, me and uh, Thurber were going after. That was like uh, around helping around three hundred eighty, like. Close to 400 gold before the yeah, event it was, started. It was, it was 400, and Dusk was like 20 to 30 gold yeah. above that. And after the event, like right now, like the market price is hovering around 280, last time I checked. For Dawn? Yeah. Dawn, is, yeah, Dawn's about 280, 290. So, uh, well, it's more also the availability, uh, availability of it, because there's uh, like maybe 10 available right now, but like before there was like three. Mm-hmm. Like, like what, like what, so, like the rumors. Um, according to the rumors on the internet, which are always true, uh, there's always one, true. one guild because like the uh, the trading post is across all servers. All servers use the same trading post. So apparently, there's this one guild that bought all the precursors like before people realized what they were for. Bought them for cheap, like, like about like fifty gold each maybe, and just hoarded like hoarded the market, hoarded the market on the precursors and kept driving their price up. Yeah, that, that was a theory at least, but yeah. But hopefully it's it, this, and then like maybe it, fingers crossed they'll do something like that for uh, Christmas as well. Because I would love to get a, a dawn for, for Christmas. <laughs> when do we all? I'd love to get a. I'd love to get a zap for Christmas. Yeah, actually, uh, one of our guild members, guildies, uh, Rails, he did get dawn. Got, that, uh, yeah, he got dawn, yeah. sold it, and bought yeah, spark. That, that, that. Are you serious? Yeah, oh, yeah. God. He didn't think about us. I he can't blame him. He got it. No, he did think about how it. Did he, he helped, how did he get he helped on? with the commander fund. He got it from the chest at on. the end of the uh, dynamic event for killing the champion in Ancient Karka. Oh, yep, he damn. got lucky. And then he also got another uh, one. It's, he got it's... Are you serious? Yeah? No, he bu- he bought Spark. No, he, he, he bought, bought Spark. Oh, he, he bought Spark. Spark. So that's okay. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. But the uh, the the precursor is just one thing, and actually, it's one of the easier things to get for a legendary. Yeah, because it's like your availability of it is guaranteed. Like, yeah, it costs a lot of gold. But it's also not based on luck. Yeah. Well, unless you're trying yeah. to um, make it yourself. Yeah, make it yourself. It's, it's, yeah. it's based on bad. brute force, either through money or through just throwing no, stuff at the mystic forge. No, just through money again, like mystic forge. Like, because the way you get it's a throwing money through the mystic forge again, like throwing four random rares or exotics of the same type, and trying to get the precursor of that type. And I think it's safer to just literally just pay yes, for it. Yes, it is safer just to literally yeah, pay for it. I don't like gambling. As like somebody that, who has I'd made sixty rare great swords at one time and tried to for like get a precursor from that, like you're better off saving the money you um selling the materials you uh you would use to make those rares and just saving up for the precursor. Yeah. Or just castrate yourself and end it. Mm-hmm. That's always yeah, a, that's, that's an option really for everything. It. And yeah. So apart from the precursor, there's like some basic stuff that every legendary needs to get, and a lot of, like they're called gifts. Um, yeah, like I think the easiest way is to break down the legendaries. Like take one legendary and just break down what's all the stuff that's required for it. All right, yeah, we so, can do dawn. I'm like, yeah, Riven, you okay with doing? Yeah, with I, have, dawn? I have it pulled up on my screen sure. right now. Sure. Um, for sun- sunrise. Um, the, the base components for the first first thing you need a um dawn rage obviously precursor then you need yeah. uh gift of sunrise and to make a gift of sunrise you need a gift of light a gift of metal a hundred icy rune stones which are one gold each from a vendor and a superior sigil of strength and to get like not just any vendor mind you it's the vendor that shows up after beating one of the 
uh, dragon champions. Yeah, like, dr- but claw, he's there for four fucking mic. hours, so you have time. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, it's one of the easier like boss fights you have to unlock, but it's not still like, like ba- you... it's not like buying the Obsidian's charge from Balthazar. Well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll there. get to we'll later. Get that, that's we're 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 into that one. Run down the list, man. Bang. All right, so get the light. Takes 250 orcalcum ingots, 250 cured hardened leather squares, 100 charged lodestones, and the gift of Ascalon. And to get the gift of Ascalon, you basically had need 500 Ascalonian tears, which drop, uh, which you which you get after completing um, AC uh, explorable. Uh, 500. That's with like zeros and stuff. <laughs> that's that's like <laughs> not, uh, with that's, with the current way. Uh, th- those run. work of just like doing doing a run, you get sixty of the ends for the first time. That's still one of the easier sides is the Ascalonian tears, just one element it, it, of or, the like. This is just the gift of sunrise. And keep in mind the or or, key, or hecum ingots. It's, you need five hundred uh. or hecum ore, and the ore nodes are on twenty four hour spawn cycle, and there's only a sl- like a very li- like limited amount of God. ore nodes. In the entire I world. I need a thousand aura calcum ore. Yeah. So much aura calcum. Yep. And uh, too much aura calcum. Gets and that's that. The aura calcum is not the hard part. It's the charged lodestones that has me cringing. Yeah, and it gets better. Oh, um, the gift of metal also requires two hundred fifty aura calcum ingots. So you need a thousand aura calcum ore, and two hundred fifty dark steel ingots, two hundred fifty mithril ingots, and two hundred fifty oh, platinum God. ingots. It hurts my head thinking about but it. JKC. How do I how do I put all these together to get the gift of metal and gift of light? Well, I'm glad you asked, Thurb. You need 400 armor smithing and weapon smithing. Well, yeah, but weapon smithing is. Which I haven't uh, even started armor smithing. I'm like 170 weapon smithing, and I yeah. hate it so much. Gift of metal is from 400 armor smithing. Gift of light is guy. from weapon smithing, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Also, let's... If you get a car- crafting booster, use that. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Uh, and that's just the gift of sunrise. Let me get to, to get into the gift of fortune, which is everybody's favorite. I think we'll, we'll let's let's skip fortune for now and just cover mastery, and then okay. the the shards will make sense then. because right. mastery is, while while it's still like you know Titanic in attempt, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So gift of mastery is a one bloodstone shard which you can buy for two hundred skill points from Biani. It's not not a big deal. 200 skill points. I mean, everybody has that, right? Yeah, it's not a big deal. 200 skill points. Uh, yeah. Then you I'm need at 190. Dirt cheap. <laughs> Actually, you will probably get near 200 skill points by getting one of these other things. Mm-hmm. So, 250 mm-hmm. obsidian. Well, you shards. have to because you need a, you need world completion for a legendary, so you'll get 200 skill points. Yeah. Yeah. So, 250 obsidian shards, and they're they are sold for 2100 karma each. From a vendor at the Temple of Balthazar in the Streets of Devastation. Or so you can run fractals. Uh, yeah. Or you can run fractals, yeah. But, but Basically, they broke it down to either you need just for this gift of mastery, because we'll come back to the Obsidian Shards later. Just for this one gift, you need over 500,000 karma, oh. or just shy of 4,000 uh, fractal relics, with like the things you get from the fractals. They were talking about before. Mm. So, okay, that's 500,000 karma. Keep that in mind. You don't, wait, you really only need 4,000? I've probably spent 2,000. So you need 3,750 just to cover the gift of mastery, not to mention the uh, gift of fortune. I've spent probably 2,000. Well, all right then. All right. And damn it. the <laughs> third component in the gift of mastery is the gift of exploration, which you get uh, You get two of if you had to set the world. And keep in mind, 100%ing the world it means also 100%ing all the maps in uh, World Wolf. So. So yeah, that's a, that's definitely something you want to start like start working on that now. Because uh, there's there certain things you can start like ahead of time, and then the home stretch will be like the home stretch for me is definitely Gift of Fortune. Um, and we'll we'll explain why that one is the the one to save for last. Yeah, and speak, um, speaking of World Wolf, um, the last part of Gift of Battery is a Gift of Battle. Which costs 500 badges of honor from any World Wolf World vendor. You mean badges of jumping, right? Badges of jumping, correct. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Why, why, why does everyone call these badges of jumping? Oh, because the easiest way to get them is just to farm the jumping puzzle yeah. on multiple characters. Yeah, do you want to explain the e- e- EB jumping puzzle? Um, I'd rather not, because <laughs> it's always being camped on our server, but uh. it's it's just a big, it's a jumping puzzle that at the end of it, 
it, it is uh, depends on the uh, level of the character, but you can get like a dozen of these badges uh, for a high level, or like you know, it's I think three on a low level. But then you can just do it multiple times uh, on characters. It resets every day per character. And you just get 500 of those, and then you're set for Gift of Battle. Yep. All right, so let's yeah. jump into the fun part, the Gift of Fortune. <laughs> All right, so... Is it really fun? I think no, it's, it's just not. depressing. It is it's, highly it, depressing. It all revolves around the Mystic Clover mechanic. Yeah, so uh, first up, we need 77 Mystic Clovers, which is an odd number, but it's 77, so, well, who cares? And yeah. this is the reason why it's called the Gift of Fortune, because... To make the Mystic Clovers, it takes 10 Obsidian Shards, which again, cost 2100 Karma each from the vendor, and 10 Mystic Coins, 10 Globs of Ectoplasm, and 10 uh, Crystals, which you buy from Miani. That sounds easy, until you realize you only have a 1 in 3 chance of putting all, those, all, all that stuff into the Mystic Forge and getting a Mystic Clover. Well, no, I think how it works is... Um, you could you could roll a dice with one obsidian shard, one coin, one ectoplasm, and then six philosopher stones, which breaks down to a one in three chance. But if you do it with ten, and like the philosopher stones and the crystals are both the same number of yeah yeah, uh, so there's multiple ways of getting those skill points. Clover, yeah. Basically, either way you roll it, you're going to end up with a one in three chance of actually getting a mystic clover. And so Not the seventy a good chance rate for yeah the, the seventy seven is a lie because you're going to be doing this. Uh, over 200 times. Yeah, essentially, people have, like who have made legendaries have said, yeah, like besides the um the obsidian shards needed for the gift of mastery, the karmally needed to buy the obsidian shards to make the 77 mystic clovers. They basically need a million karma for both, on yeah. average. So a million. But the karma thing is, is like the reason why I call that the home stretch is because that's like still it's 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 a big task, but you can do it little by little. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, you could do, like, a, a day's work will probably get you, like, you know, a, a shard, a coin, and, like, you might be able to get, like, an ecto- ectoplasm with a rare. Uh, and then just skill points. The issue is you getting those obsidian shards, because for most servers, you uh, you either get them from the fractals, or you can go to or And I swear, on every server, it's always bugged the way to get to Balthazar. No, there's, that, there's a Reddit post that usually says it's working on this server. Switch here. Yeah, so just switch servers for a week. Because yep. otherwise, uh, why not just have guesting working, or why not have your events working? Arena because that would make sense. There, I'm that sorry. Would make sense. I, I don't know where my head went there for a second. I was. Yeah. It's a crazy mindset. How naive you are. And then, like, you were doing a fractal, just raging. <laughs> so much rage. We like this game. We promise it's fun. <laughs> Yeah, but like, the only reason why you're complaining so much is simply because like we invested so much time into the game, and we actually do like the game. It's just like this we're is getting paid by ArenaNet to be objective. We yeah, just we saw this thing so that much. it's like this is the high tier of of the game. This is getting something that is really cool looking. That it genuinely the these for the most part these legendaries really look awesome, yeah. and it it definitely makes you stand out. But it's just the the road to getting them is. It's a, a thorny, bloody yeah, road. Like, it's a, it's a long road. Clear, like we're not complaining about what we need to get legendary. Like unlike the fractals, all, all, all of our complaints there. Like we are, like we understand. Like it's a legendary. You are like you're trying to do something that's really, really hard. It's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be. I difficult. hate to say this, but yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have this any. The only way I I would like to see this change is that precursor, because that is just trying to get as much money to give to buy it from somebody who got lucky. And if they found some way to get the like, even if it was some long drawn out way to get a precursor, I would be okay with that. As long as it's like, okay, this will happen. Mm-hmm. The gift of fortune, mastery, and all like the gift of sunrise, I'm okay with that. That's a long road, but it's there's a reason for it. Yeah, and just know. let me but, finish off real quickly. Uh, the oh, yeah, last two parts of gift of fortune, essentially, is like 250 of each tier six mat. So like all the tier six like last like highest tier crafting mats, uh, fine crafting materials, you need two hundred fifty of each to make those gifts. Now, like for people who don't know, what are those like? Give, give examples of some of those. Like vicious claw, ancient bone, vicious fang, armored scale, vile, powerful blood, and powerful venom sack. Okay, so like people might have gotten like at level thirty, they might have gotten like claws, and that like the tier six version is vicious claws. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Just so it drops from like um like level eighty mobs essentially. 
And that's that's a very rare chance from level 80 mobs. Oh, yeah. Having played oh, yeah. a level 80 for a long time. Uh, but then, yeah, the 250 globs of ecto, ectoplasm, you're going to use most of that up on the Mystic Clovers, then you have to go back and farm. And how do you, there's no easy way to get the uh, ectoplasm, nope. is there? Um, you can make yellows and pray. Yeah, you can uh, make rares. Like, if you get a whole bunch of tier 5 minecrafting materials, you can farm the materials needed to make rares. And then like, salvage them using the Black Line salvaging kit. And get Garrett Black Dactyls. Lion Salvage Kit. The only way to get those is through the dang Black Jeez. Lion chests. Uh, you could use Master Salvage Kits, but the chance is half. Yeah, it's 25% yeah. versus 50% with the Black Lion uh, Salvage Kit. But the thing is, like, you jump for something worth a lot of money. Yeah. But the thing about the Black Lion Salvage Kit is, like, you can buy it from the gem store using gold. You convert your gold to gems and you buy it. That's how, like, most Ridiculous. of the like, those are, like, in the, in the market is through that method. The issue with that is. During the holidays, like, say, now, preparation for Winter's Day, people start buying up a lot of gems, and that drives up the price of uh, the gem-to-gold ratio. So It's it's never been going down. It's just constantly been going up. Yeah, like... like It um, was static for a while. It was static, yeah. It was while. static, but it wasn't going down. Like, right now, yeah. like, to buy a Black Light and Salvage you get, it costs five gold. Before, like, yeah. a week and a half ago, it costs, like, two gold and fifty in gems. So, like, obviously, like, the market, like, is self-adjusting, so the price of Ectos has gone up as well, so now Ectos are now approximately 36 silver apiece. And if you're buying 250 of, of them, it adds up. Yep. And so it's most people don't want to go through that, me- like, that method because they're already spending all that money on the precursors, so they're trying to, like, do, we want- do you want to buy gems to try and get some salvage kits to try and break this down yourself? And it- it's... It's a it's a long road where you're yeah. probably gonna end up forking over some money either for keys for chests or something. Yeah, and I, is that honestly like actually ectos aren't isn't not like the miss I I don't think the mystic clovers or the ectos are the hardest part, but legendaries or even the precursor necessarily. It's the lodestones because for some yeah. of um the legendaries. Well, and that, the, the lodestones are just for sunrise. Yeah, it, it, it depends on, on yes. what, whatever legendary you want to go for, yeah. but there's always going to be something in that upper section. Yeah, the only legendary, you can find this stuff on the wiki. The only legendary that does not require lodestones is the legendary staff. But otherwise... the oh, re- Bifrost, nice. Yeah, Bifrost. Otherwise, the, all the other um, legendaries do require uh, like a component of lodestones. And for me and Thur, we have to get 100 charges lodestones, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. Uh, and me! And me! Yeah, and, yeah, you, and you as well. For Bolt. And... Can you get those in the fractals, or is it only in COE? Yes, you can get you it can in get fractals. I can get char- uh, cores and lodestones. Yeah, it's completely random. Like you get a random assortment of uh, lodestones depending on which fractal you do. Like for an underwater one, when you fight after you kill a jellyfish, it has a chance to the chest has a chance to drop uh, charges cores, which you could turn into lodestones. Yeah, I just sooner farm uh, Crucible of Eternity a bunch. Yeah, but that's the problem. Like you can farm the. Dungeons, like which is lotions drop, like and keep in mind they only drop from the chest, not from mobs. So magic find yeah. doesn't affect it. But the thing is, like, it's such a low drop rate for these lodestones. Like the price of charged lodestones is two gold fifty silver a piece. Last time I checked, and you need a hundred of these. Yeah, so that's two hundred fifty gold right there. Yep. Yeah, and it's basically just been that's going dirt up the entire cheap, time. Man, just yeah. spend a lot of money in real life. <laughs> I mean, you you could try to spend real money, like go to like arena net and say, "Hey, like I, I want to give you, you money." You should you would expect that if you're spending like forty dollars, gems would be at least cheaper in bulk. But nope, no, they're not. And the exchange rate is so screwed up that, like, if you're not if I I feel bad for the people who are buying gems to buy legendaries because they are spending a lot of fucking money. Yeah, because you... Oh, yeah. Like, the ratio you change um, gems into gold is actually a lot lower than it is to spend gold for gems. It almost seems like they're driving people to gold buyers. Exactly. Like, I don't know. It's a problem. Like, there was a huge bot problem like a, like a couple like a month ago before Anet finally got around to banning them. And the thing is, like, the reason why the bots have any business or the companies that run the bots, rather, is because, like, you have like these legendaries that like, require an insane amount of grind and the same amount of gold, and obviously like your if your official prices are way too uh, outrageous for official like money to uh, change your, change your yeah, real life money. It's it's the comparison between like I could spend if I, I got ten bucks here that I want to spend I'm gonna I'm gonna use for gold. I'm gonna I could either transport 
tra- transfer it through the gem store for like you know two gold maybe. Let, two let's say gold. right now, yeah, t- it's 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 one to one right now. So it'd be like you know ten bucks, ten gold. Or I can go through this like you know Chinese company it is they are shady, but they're saying they can give me twenty gold. Twenty gold. Oh, I'm no rocket dollar. scientist, but that's that's more money. Twenty dollar. Yeah. And so people were people were doing that. Yeah, man. Uh, Chinese political prisoners work pretty efficiently. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. When it comes to playing <laughs> video games, uh, but it, it's they they hopefully stamped out a lot of that, and hopefully they'll be able to sort out their like the issue with uh, the, the the gold to gem, gem to gold ratio, so that everyone's happy with that. Yeah, probably not. But though. in general, like if you are going for legendary, and all you have to do is like look up pictures of a lot of these legendaries, Google go towards two legendaries, watch video YouTube videos. They're really nice looking. Like, this is some of the best looking ga- like, weapons pretty. in any game I've seen so far. It's not even like they just look pretty from an artistic point. They're animated skins. I will say I do have one beef with it, though. Which is which because you? my main that like, I've always been playing, the commander, is, is Thurbleton. Mm-hmm. And I, it's, I normally go by the, the handle Thurbleton. I, I ended up make, naming him Thurbleton because it sounded sl- slightly French. And I think for the most part, French are, li- are, are douchebags. Are cowards too? Well, they are—they are cheese-eating surrender monkeys. Yes. No offense. And I say all this—I say this all this in jest, but I don't say that in jest. Yeah, I know. The opinions of New Brown um, do not reflect the other members of the Lincoln cast. But but the the whole idea of the Mesner was to be annoying, so that's that's what that was. But funny thing, let's say I got a sunrise and I'm using because that is a great sword and I'm using it to attack the Mesmer pink hue overwrite the effects of Sunrise, basically making that legendary pointless for a Mesmer. Your footsteps glow. That's yeah, my, my, that's, that, that is true. My footsteps would glow. But I'd like to get the most effort out of the legendary that I've spent so much time getting, so I'm now leveling a warrior instead. Oh. Which, I got no problem with them. I like warriors. But it's that's the, like the issue is more... Your entire yeah, I wanted progress. to play a Mesmer like the most, and... Because I want to get this item as well, I have to like go back to another another profession I like to play. But I it, it sort of Wait, stinks. So for the actual time. sun, like the the effect on the blade itself, you don't see it because of the mesmer override. You, effect override? you see the uh, it's it's sort of clouded when I'm auto attacking. You see it when it's like uh, out, on it. like when when yeah. I have it sheathed, and then <coughs> when I go to do one attack where I raise the sword up in the air, it 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 does the sweeping animation, but the auto attack um, it's it's sort of Locked out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, haven't, I haven't seen a Mesmer with it yet, so I can't ask him. Oh, I've uh, seen a couple of Mesmers with it, and I should have asked them. Yeah. It's it, it's actually very nice. It's If you're hanging out in Lion's Arch, uh, you might get a chance to see somebody on your server with it. Uh, because since since the uh, the Lost Shores thing and the release of all these um, precursors, we are seeing a lot more people, especially Twilight. Uh, a lot of people are yeah. liking the, the Darkness one. Twilight is awesome, though. I've seen a couple of I've seen a couple of Bifrost. I've seen Incinerators, Twilight's Dawns. I think and I might have seen the legendary we, Scepter. We should say Dawn and Dusk are the two biggest ones that are like yeah. hundreds of golds. Bifrost is like two. All right, so there is um somebody did uh there's a website called Guild Wars Two Spidey which keeps track of all the market data, and somebody tapped into that API and created a website to keep track of the uh, real time price so. How, if you bought every single component of Legendary, how much that will cost you? For last time I checked, the Dawn, like for Dawn, it, it is it one of the most expensive Legendaries. Um, it would co- like all the components would cost you one thousand one hundred thirty-eight gold if you bought everything. Oh Jesus! And how much? I want to see that in dollars because <laughs> I'm sure some idiots out there has spent that much money in Probably. dollars. Mm-hmm. And and less yes offense to those people who have spent that money into legendaries you are a fucking idiot unless you use toilet paper for money in which case i hate you because i envy you <laughs> yeah and like bifrost like bifrost isn't that expensive like what i saw i think it was around like 600 gold because the no charge load like no load stones means it's real cheap yeah but again there's like well, six, API... 600 gold it's like most like 99% of the Tech... world's population does not have like, over 100 gold no, According to their math, um, isn't Eternity the cheapest one? <laughs> well, yeah, all right, so let me briefly explain. Eternity is what you get when you combine Twilight and Sunrise, the two great uh, legendary great swords. 
You basically get Eternity, which combines their effects. So it's a super cool legendary. For, for those who don't know, the effect of Sunrise like is it looks like you're seeing Sunrise through the sword. So, like, it's not a physical thing. It's you're seeing a window through, like, some place that's Sunrise. Yeah, the place itself is like and, a window to another world where you're seeing the sky. And Twilight is... Very, like, very painterly and just, it's a really cool look. Mm -hmm. And when you swing the sword, it does a cool animation. Twilight is the exact same, except for nighttime. And when you have Eternity, let's say the map you're on is nighttime. It's got the dawn or the sunrise animation. And when you're in a place that's daytime, it's got the twilight animation. Oh, man. Yep. I'm drooling. So best you of both worlds. can't see it, but I'm drooling. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. You need Why to stop. Why would you not? Oh, I, I'm kind of hard on to, hard yeah, on but, to get that legendary. Uh, yeah. So while we uh, let you uh, finish masturbating, um, yeah, but now we talked about like, up, what sir. goes into a legendary, let's talk about how we can get one. I think the first most important thing when you're trying to get a legendary is you have to realize it's not something you'll get in the next two months or so of straight playing. It's there's a lot of luck involved, a lot of RNG, and a lot of time invested. So generally, like for everybody in the guild, like just recently started like pledging to get legendary. I doubt anybody within the next six months will get legendary. With the exception, yeah, the, uh, the precursor people. is going to be the, the, the last thing on my list. It, it, it all depends about luck, too. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is once you have everything else accrued, you have the tools to uh, to to get closer to getting a, uh, a, a precursor. You could either use your profession to either sell stuff or uh, break those, like break, uh, make a bunch of rares, break those down for ectos, and then sell those to make money, or throw them in the forge, roll the dice, try and get a precursor that way. You've already like done a ton of ways to to get these materials that people want. So even if you don't want to get a legendary, we we told you tons of tons of things people are in the market are looking for and paying money for. The entire Guild Wars uh, market is driven by the hunt for legendaries. So I, I, yeah, especially more more now more than yeah. ever. So like if you if you're smart about it, you can definitely play in the market and try to like like. For instance, like if there's a winter days coming up and you want to make a bet bet on um which rest like which ingredients are being used and which stay recipes, you can definitely do that. Or just like as the said, sell actos, make rares, farm material. Or if you want to play market, go far go out farming like, like I did for too much too much time. Farm uh, rare crafting materials, farm orchicum, and all that stuff. But honestly, like the best like the best way to get gold, which is the main resource you would use to get the, all the components you need for legendary. Because let's be honest, you're not gonna be farming every every single thing. You have to buy something. Yeah. And not to mention, it costs a minimum of hundred gold because you need to buy the um the um what you call it the uh, icy, I, runes, I see icy rune stones from like, rune stones. Uh, the vendor for one of the gifts. And like honestly, the best way to make gold is to run um explorables like AC explorable and the first two paths of Citadel Fire. So, Ascalon Catacombs and Citadel Fire, basically, because they're both relatively straightforward dun explorable dungeons. And with the, uh, the first path of Honor of the Waves is pretty yes. easy. Uh, yep. Do you remember which path that was? Butcher, Butcher Path. Yes. Yeah, as long the, as the, the, as long the, as the, the floor above, is working, the, the not water one. Yeah. Yeah. Because as long as the uh, floor is working in that dungeon, it's a good yeah, one. Because they buffed the um, how much some um, like. Uh, not gold, but silver, like drops from those dungeons, and now like each boss individually drops uh, a small amount of gold. And once you add it up across what like uh, a full run across all all paths, you do get a good amount of gold. Like I think a full, a full clear of AC explorable gets you about two gold fifty or three gold. Am I right? And that, and that's before you break down some of the rares and yeah. whatnot you got yeah. too. They, they also buff um, so the, you might get lucky on top of they that. Buff the chances for rares to drop uh, alpha bosses as well. So there's always that, and not to mention all the, the trash gear that you get. You can just vendor, get money from that too. So in the end, you're, run, you're getting about like four gold from uh, full run. So, uh, um, basically, what we're saying is, people who are looking for the uh, the uh, legendaries and on, and on the road to it tend to like you know have a decent amount of money crewed up, which sort of goes into our closing topic. Um, o over the weekend, uh, Shin Boy on a whim, I guess, wanted to get a commander icon. On and a whim. On yes. a frigging whim. On a whim. It took me uh, five months with, like, you know, the, the, the guild to try and get one. Um, Moonlit, we had a bit of luck with uh, uh, Rayos, again, got the precursor and 
feeling like you know it's a, he didn't earn it, so it was it was a random thing. He donated a big chunk, um, but it's yeah on a whim. He had like forty gold and a bunch of other people working to get legendaries. Like yeah, well we'll throw you like you know ten, fifteen, twenty. He got a, a, a commander icon within like an hour, and I I died a little on the inside. Jesus. Yeah, like I'm, people clearly don't like you very much there <laughs> compared to Shinboy. I, I guess I Shinboy guess so. Shinboy is a social butterfly. Is he what is. I would call him. He is a, a, a gentleman and a scholar, apparently. Yeah, like I don't, I still, yeah. I, I still am in shock that he got a commander. Like he, like he got it within the span of like a day, almost. That's it, it was nuts. within an hour. Nuts. I was there. Yeah, and like he, and he got like they could have given that money to like Guild Wars charity or something. <laughs> I don't know. And, like, I guess we could go into, like, why he got the commander. Typically, the commander icon is used for uh, World vs. World. So, like, yeah. uh, like uh, easier to coordinate uh, different raids, coordinate people who aren't in their guild or in your party to attack certain points. Like, it plants, plants a giant icon onto their map that they cannot miss. And mm-hmm. yeah. but I think well, the reason why Shinboy got it is because that icon, which appears in World vs. World, also appears in... Uh, PBE, if you have it turned on. Yeah, it's so annoying! <laughs> Get rid of it! If you have a commander icon, you better not keep it on during PBE. Then you don't want to be near Shimboy. Yeah, while you're AFK in Lion's Arch at the bank. But it, he, he got it, I guess, with the reasoning of wanting to do guild events. Because uh, he does do, a, a, for ours, he does like a, a karaoke night. And I guess he wants to... He spent a lot of time with uh, Wove Wove last night, but like, uh, does he do stuff in the world? I'm usually asleep because I'm having to work weekends with the holidays, and this is one of the new things. Uh, but outside what, of what can a is PVE not... commander do? Is basically the question we're we're what asking you, ourselves. Uh, what you wanted to do, which was just you know lead people around, do jumping puzzles. That's maybe you could use that to lead them to events in or. Yeah, or you could rally folks around on or events, but that's still only like level 80s. That's like, let's let's say you got a big guild of, of folks that are like multi leveled. You guys have any ideas? I mean, like I, I had the idea of a race, but that's kind of that's you need a lot of people to organize that. Yeah, and also cheating is very easy in a race. I've tele- yes, very I'll just tell up. You want us to race from Core Shore, Cur Shore to the Frostcourt Sound? Anywhere, to be honest. I've teleported. Just teleport is the waypoint. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do it with all lobies. Fresh characters just made them. Where's your teleportation now, huh? Well, the thing is, like, certain classes have, like, swiftness at level 1, like yeah. engineers, I think, uh, with a heal. I believe it's Chad to give swiftness. I mean, you know, actually, on level 1, like, I think all classes are relatively equal, but the thing is, like, you're not going to, like, you need escorts for lobbies through higher level zones, because you will get killed. So let's just... Well, yeah, it, it's... That, that, that is just one of the ideas, but, I mean, like, it's... What what can a PvE commander do? You, like, noob, you got any ideas? Um, they could, like, organize stuff in PvE. <laughs> like, yes. a world versus world, it serves... Sp- the purpose of that command icon is for world it's versus or- world. Organizing people around. And actually, an interesting thing is, um, Arena said that they are working, like, they are trying to improve the beacon mechanics of world versus world. And a lot of people don't know what that means. If it's that? related to commander icons as a beacon or what... But uh, hopefully we'll cross see swords on the map. Maybe I don't know, but hopefully we'll see something like that on the All weeks right, to come. Let's be honest; there is no real reason for a PVE commander, um, aside from like flinging people around jumping puzzles. But even then, so like, having like, the icon doesn't really help anybody. Uh, like, no, it's it's a good way of of getting people organized to like, okay, follow me. Yeah. Because right now with the current system of like, have having people in what, what we would do before that was having people in groups and put a target on one person. And usually you. Yeah, usually me, just because I'm the only one who gets off his butt and organizes things since nobody likes me. We all love you there. Uh, we like uh, you. Well, no, it's you guys like me. It's just you like Shin much more because he got his icon. <laughs> all right, to be fair, I did not coordinate towards Shin. I, I, I just found out <laughs> I didn't even today, know about this. So. He guilted me into giving him six gold. It was madness. How do you guilt someone... How about I guilt you into giving... Why won't you give me six gold? Well, because how much gold oh, do you have? Oh, I have a list of reasons that I will not say on it. On a podcast on why I will not give you money. <laughs> oh, and you, I did donate a whole bunch of stuff for your gold jewel crafting to you as well. That's true. That's and you're, I did help, you're completely I fucking, you're completely I, okay. But I helped Revan, your food. Revan is, I helped your I helped your cooking. 
Oh, oh, that yeah, but you got materials in in return. JKC got nothing. It's it's sort of like that idea of giving back, and uh, let's say Riven wants to wants people to do stuff with him. He has to go down to their their level of the fractals and help them out. Um, that's that's yeah, a terrible. Yeah, I was doing anyway. Thing. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, but, I mean, uh, the thing is, like about Shin's PB commander is that he has a um a bad habit of buying things on the whim. Yeah, um, and I'm pretty sure majority of that commander fund came out of his money because he got a lot of money from um. Uh, running, he, he uh, did from he like a lot 40 of gold or something. Is he, there's yeah. a reason why he's a judge engineer for the Lincoln Force. Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess uh, the the question we'll leave to you guys before we do plugs. I, I I'm used up all the topics we have. Uh, there there is something we do want to talk about, but it's probably gonna be another podcast. But just going over dungeons. I'm sort. Of, I'm saying it now, so hopefully it'll be a reality next time when I'm not the host. Uh, I guess we should mention. Yeah, Simic is uh, on vacation, and Durin has the plague. Yeah, that's why they're not here. We should. I should at the beginning. Oh well. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm here. That's all that matters. Yeah, my name you are. Is you are the heart of this podcast, New Brahma. Heart of this podcast. Okay. If I had a heart, oh. I would have yeah. a heart. You heartless person. But no, it's uh, we're, we're I love children, to so that talk about um, explorable dungeons, especially since they're they're maybe getting a remake or a makeover um, on the horizon. But just talking about boss fights, because there's some really good boss fights and there's some really dumb boss fights, uh, good and bad. But we'll we'll, we'll hopefully talk oh, about that later. Yeah. Shinboy yeah. wanted to be on it, but he is currently drunk and shooting guns. I uh, I would also like good combination. Yeah, kids don't do that. I would also like to talk about um do hopefully the future podcast, like we, we talk start talk about class uh class builds and class balance. I know a lot of people in the guild be asking me specifically about yeah. oh like what class should I play or what what build should I do etc etc etc. We usually we usually and, say and, don't for the love of God don't play an NG don't play a uh, ranger and then. <laughs> Up to you. Don't play Necro either. Yeah, Ra- Rangers got such a ner- nerf in Wove Wove. It's like, what's what's a good build for Rangers in Wove Wove? It's like, quit quit your profession and re-roll. Re-roll Thief. Um, thief is always the answer. Yeah. Ah, so sad. We roll but Guardian. It, 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 if you guys have questions, uh, or, or, or questions you want us to answer, we will do our best to answer, preferably related to Guild Wars 2. Um, or if you have any ideas on what a PvE commander, maybe your, your guilds do stuff, um, it's like, hey, this would be a really cool idea. I'll I'll submit this. Uh, LincolnCast at gmail.com. Noob should know is this email address. Is it the LincolnCast or is it just LincolnCast? I don't know. I have to... Let me check the forums. Or just uh, simply like us on what. Facebook and message us there no, at no, www.facebook.com slash the LincolnCast. Don't. don't. Riven, do you have any plugs while I'm looking this up? <laughs> uh, I'll plug the, the group finder site. It's uh, gw2lfg.com. It's a cool looking. It's a nice site for finding groups. People they have it set up so you can sort sort by dungeon, and you can sort by just fractals. You can also sort by, uh, well, sort of region. You can sort by North American servers and sort by um, European servers. And people Very just cool. uh, people Very just cool. post their uh, the character names up there and what they're running. Most of the times it's like fractals, level twenty, warrior. Must have twenty plus agony resistance. Yeah, that's something that has me kind of worried. Is like it's the the must have agony resistance. I've seen stuff like you know we don't want people with magic fine gear. The thing is, uh, your the thing is with those um ascended rings, your the agony resistance if it, it helps. Wasn't pre- I know it helps. No, 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 if it wasn't pre infused, it doesn't show up when you link it. Oh, sweet. So you could just troll them and put on un- uninfused rings. Pro tip, kids. Troll tip. the people who are trying to set a bad standard in game. Yeah. Um, elitist assholes yeah. is what they are. Speaking of elitist assholes, JKC? JKC, you got any plugs? <laughs> oh, God. I feel oh, so bad. You mean. thought I was going to go See, to Noob. Third, this is why people didn't donate as fast for yours, because you're just mean-spirited. I am. I'm a terrible, terrible person. Wolf Love has made me bitter. Yeah, uh, I feel the love in this room. Don't worry. Um, I, the only thing I want to plug is, if you are in uh, Lincoln Force, be sure to drop by the Lincoln Force Mumble. Uh, the, all the uh, Mumble information is in the guild. Like we do uh, on Fridays, we have karaoke. Oh, yeah, we, nights. we have a new we mumble now. Karaoke. Uh, you don't. Need, you can't be drunk. Most like recommended to be drunk. Uh, you don't need to know how to sing. But 
either we have Brian and I really, really nice. Um, or just drop by the mumble, just talk talk with us, uh, hang out with us. We're all cool guys, most of us. Except for the ribbon, um, Thurb. <laughs> and Thurb, apparently. Thurb. Yeah, the, 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 the Mumble is now in the same continent the server, like the, the uh, server we play on is. All right, it's, plug it's out no to. Wait, in the Netherlands. Who was it? Who was it who bought it? Crap. Uh, uh, Caleb. Caleb. Can't remember Thank his you. Name. Caleb Droach is one of his characters' names. Shout out yeah. for yeah. people who, who are helping fund this Mumble server. Thank you. Thank um, you. We have a good time um, in it. I have a plug. Can I plug? I maybe. <laughs> Fine. I yes. would have and asked. Right. I, again, plugging the Giant Bomb PC Gaming Hub, Company of Heroes, oh, all yes. kinds of multiplayer gaming goodness on the PC. Hop on on the just Google Giant Bomb PC Gaming Hub, and it will come up on Google for the thread with the Mumble server information. Join our group, play fun games, happy times. Woo! Right on. Woo! I, 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 I will. I will. Bandwagon on that, and just it, it, if you are Can listening to this, his inner from... Ric Flair, mm-hmm. maybe. What? You, you don't no. know who Ric Flair is, do you? No. If you uh, listen to this podcast just from Guild Wars and don't know anything about GiantBomb.com, check it out. It's an awesome website about video games. On the internet. So fuck Ryan Davis. Yes, it is on the internet. Uh, you can also give us uh, feedback uh, for any of those uh, suggestions, or if you have any questions for us. Uh, or if you have criticism, if you do not want to hear another podcast like the one we did today, or let last us know. Week. <laughs> yeah, or or last week. No, of course uh, they want to hear what we did the, last well, week. If you do love it, let us know, and we will do more like it. Um, it is thelincolncast at gmail dot com, or you can talk to us on Twitter at thelincolncast. We have a Twitter. Spelled, Wait, why do we have a Twitter? I don't know. I'll ask Cynic that next time I talk to him. Um, I guess that's a pretty like good plug for me. I feel like they've explained to me why we have a Twitter before. Wait, is this part of the vetting process? Like, we have to have a Twitter before ANET no. officially allows no. us to have a Twitter? We clearly already failed no. the vetting. No chance for that shit. I am pretty sure we failed the vetting, but... Uh, Thanks a lot, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll... <laughs> It wasn't my fault, man. It was ArenaNet it's, conspiracy. He, he is our gift and our curse. Mostly our curse. <laughs> yes, mostly, but... In, 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 in the way curses go, it, he's not that bad. Really? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a backhanded compliment. You're welcome. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, I, I'm not gonna plug my Twitch channel right now just because um, I, I've been doing all I, I haven't done that many dungeons, so I've been streaming that much, and I've been working crazy hours because holidays. Yeah, holidays. A few more weeks, and I'm, I'm free. I'm back back to normal. Get your shopping done, people. That's that's my. That, Shopping. Yeah, that's my plug. Uh, FYI, if you like try to buy Christmas presents three days before Christmas, you have done something You're an wrong. Idiot. You're yeah. an idiot. You're kind of a jerk. Yeah, I don't expect like good service for like people working there because, no. Yeah, like they, they're trying to help you right. too, but if you're not being rational about it, which most likely you're irrational if you're shopping that late, uh, that late. Bit of advice: if you're shopping three days before Christmas for Christmas presents, just buy a gift card. Or just I'd, give them money. I'd At like this to point, think, you have fucked up. I'd like to think that people who listen to this podcast and who play video games like Guild Wars 2 are not the same people who are the old lady at work who doesn't understand the concept of you, we sold out of this stuff two weeks ago and don't sell it anymore. You never know. You never know. Old, and old people love video games. To to the uh, lovely, lovely lady who is playing Guild Wars 2... Um, in in her her golden years, hats off to you. <laughs>